All right, so, so we are, are back. <laughs> we're back. Back on the podcast, fourth meal, yes, headliner sir. music club, Eric Deluxe, DJ Five. Um, we got Dre Sinatra with us, and this is a first because we are actually live on Twitch. Yeah, yeah. For the first time, and and the reason we've always wanted to do a live on Twitch, but then we were like, nah, we got to do it now because a we have a very strong connection with Dre and our Twitch whole little pandemic era. Because the last time you were here was actually you know what i want to say the last time you were here was ig live days that was one that was before twitch bro when he came with the with some gifts oh yeah it was the same time we was, we was, was doing IG both live you was doing both though yeah? was doing both at i don't that think time. we were doing both because we we went straight to twitch as soon as it was like oh word I think I came twice, but the second time we was already twitching by that time. Yeah. We was twitching. Okay, so yeah, the last time. It was all blur. Um, so it we're live was. on Twitch, but we're going to try to be mindful of the people that are just watching YouTube or or Apple or um, Spotify. So, you know. Dre, welcome to the pod. Thank you, man. Yeah, it's an honor crazy. to be here. Thank you. Yo, I had a word. Shout out to Nick Pereira, too, man. The whole squad, you know, LASC champions, baby. Come on. Shout out to Flick. Shout out to Rich. Hey, baby. Shout out to uh, Sticks. Sticks, yeah. Sticks is one of the first guys that, like, I saw him running around with, like, the owners of, like, LAFC. I saw him. I ran into them in, like, Koreatown after Cape BBQ, and he was like, oh, these are guys. LAFC, uh, new soccer team. And I didn't really... I've never been to a game, never watched a game. This was like their first year. Actually, you know what? It might have been before they came. Damn. Something crazy, but. Wait, where yeah. they come from? No, was, they just, it was just like oh, an expansion like team. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, before they were just like. I thought it was like. A, or maybe they were playing, but it was. No, like, you know what? They were Chivas, USA. It's the same team? It was, it was like uh, that expansion uh, turned into LASC. Damn. Bro, Chivas, USA. I was friends with some players through like the power 106 days yeah, yeah. so they gave me a, a jersey with like eric deluxe and 106 as a number and they signed it it's pretty fire. i still have it there we go it's fire um so you dj for them sometimes yeah i haven't done it like in about a year or two too, right yeah, yeah i think he's doing it now for the most part but yeah i was able to be do like the first five years or whatnot damn what, what year is this jersey this was from? like the probably like a year or two ago i want to say bro you know i'm on my jerseys yeah. Almost yeah, yeah. I just got it today. I was waiting for uh, DHL to pull up because I ordered from from some site on the U in the UK. It's a cl like classic football shirts, and I bought a 2001 David Beckham Manchester United uh, jersey. You actually put me on the spot in Japan too, the jersey yeah, spot. That's right, the jersey we, spot. We hit some. It was like a. It's on like on the seven. You know how in Japan the buildings so like. You can go be on the seventh floor and like there's a store. Or uh, just it's weird because the maps took us. He got, I got lost. Maps took us, and I felt bad. Maps took us to a whole different area. And I was pissed. It was like 20 minutes away. So I go to the next one and I fucking forgot. And then he went to the wrong one. I'm like, damn. Anyway, it's on the seventh floor. Small spot. Heat. And we just had everything. Bro, he has so Gas. much fire, and then, but it was so hot in there. Yeah. He had no AC. Well, that's, I was sweating. That's Japan for you, man. Seven floors up, yeah. no AC. I went to a, a spot like that. Oh, not for jerseys, but like for rap tees. Oh yeah. It was just vintage. It was like some dude's little office, and he just pulled out heat. Oh, we saw a shirt that would, he was like, "Yo, I think I would buy the Wu Tang shirt." Yeah. Which one? Well, did you go to uh, that one? Yeah, you know, you probably exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like eighteen hundred bucks. Yeah, yeah. No. which is ridiculous. <laughs> I, I, I passed on that he one. Said, oh, yeah. He said, "Yeah, he probably knows exactly no, so what shirt we're talking the about." The craziest part was, I was in the back. It was hot in there, and Fua, our boy Fua, kept farting. So, yeah. Oh my god! <laughs> Shout out to Fua, man. He's like the fixer in Japan. Like, he he'll like meet someone for the first time and be like, "Oh, uh, pull my finger." I have my Who is finger. this? My finger is stuck. Can you pull my finger? And then he'll pull it. Did you meet Fua? I don't think so, oh, shit, dude. <laughs> He does a trip, but we love him. Oh, yeah. Fool was not with us when oh, okay. you were with us. I think you did meet Fool, actually. I don't think so. Oh, I think. No. Uh, Martin was with us. I'm, <sighs> let, me, let, me, let me think. I think I think you might have met him. Anyway, so, yeah, we, we were just in Tokyo at the same time. And um, it's funny. I, I had crazy jet lag for the. I always had jet lag, but I 
fell asleep the first three nights I was there. I fell asleep at like 8 p.m. and then would wake up at like 2 in the morning. Oh, that's the worst. So I missed. I knew I knew he was going to miss it. I no, like, I, I didn't think him, I was. I was. Like, yeah. I'm like, he's not coming. There's no way he's going to make this. The problem, you, know what it, you, you were a tie? Yeah, I had a little show. You know what the problem is? Is you're, it's, It was hot as fuck and humid. So you're walking around, you're yeah. dead. So like, it would, I would crash. Because even when I was there in December, it was perfect, nice and cold. You walk around all day. You go nap and you're ready to go. Like it, it, the the heat and the humidity just yeah. drains the life out of you, man. The so. cold gives you energy, man. I don't mind. Cold gives one. me energy. Yeah, but I'd rather be cold than hot, though. No yeah. cap. Um, well, well, shit. Excited to have you. Uh, thank you. Thank we can, you. There's so much shit we could talk about. DJing with artists. DJing on the radio. DJing clubs. Travel. Uh, depression. <laughs> health. For real. You know, like this guy. This guy recently lost like well, at least 20 pounds. Was, was that COVID, COVID weight? Fucking yeah, it was COVID Hennessy, weight. I was, bro, I, was, I was drinking like five sodas, <laughs> McDonald's, tacos, like all in one day, ice cream. Like just, I got up to like 193 and I saw oh, a yeah, picture. Yeah. I'm like. One night, was that the highest you went? Yeah, I think so. And I was like, nah, bro. I was like, this ain't me. And what are you now? Like 170? 175, 176. Yeah, yeah. But I was like, I saw a picture. I'm like, nah, dog. I'm like, <laughs> I don't got real friends. A real friend would be like, yo, bro. Stop. Stop, stop stop eating whatever you're doing stop, stop it nobody says shit i'm like bro you know what the problem with real friends too is you typically see them every day every day or, or often so they don't notice it it's it, it's got to be the person you haven't seen in a year and they're like eh, well, remember when i lived a little weight didn't you when i live with scratchy right and then we're moving out and we're packing all our shit this was like what 2016 17 whatever and uh there was a scale there, so like we started weighing ourselves. Was this after the Japan trip? It was probably after Japan, maybe. And Scratchy was like, you know, whatever his weight is always like the same weight. I weighed myself like I was like two thirty. I'm like, damn dog, when you told me I was fat. <laughs> well, well, five is like that's just how I met him. It was just like a big yeah, I was always like the the, the funny big guy. Where are you at right now? Uh, right now, yeah, honestly, I lost. COVID weight, I lost, oh, I lost uh, 60 pounds initially after 2016, and I was able to maintain like 175, and after COVID, I lost another 30, Jeez. so I went to like 140-ish. Holy five. shit. Yeah. Right now, I'm 160, because, you know. You feel good at this weight, though? No, I think I want to, I'm trying to lose, go back to like 150. 150 is like perfect for me, right, right. I think, because I have room to eat. That's what I like, really diet for. You know, that's all I say. I like to I like to eat. But it's like, dude, we're going back to drinking and like traveling again. I'm just eating like shit. I'm eating weekend, bullshit. So. Yeah. Drinking and eating is what's fucking you yeah. up, man. But you know, the luck stays skinny though. Yeah, nah, man. bro, you'd be surprised, man. I just I I had I, I was blessed with like a skinny face, but like I. I fluctuate, bro. Like I'll, I'm like the stock market. <laughs> My weight is like this, up down, up down, up down, up down, and and, and like I'm pretty bad because I was. Uh, overweight, like all growing up. I can't even imagine. So that. I was like 230, 240. What? And then I got on the street team at Power. I told this story on the podcast. You got to put a picture on the on the on the yeah, podcast. I'll send a photo. One of all of us, like I'll send a photo. After, like, oh, there's plenty of photo. photos was, of me floating around. So I got only two know. where my face is like. I'm like, bro, I look yeah. like a dope boy. Like, bro, I was, I was very big, and then um, and then, and when I got on the street team when I was like 20. I, I, I like met some guy that started educating me. Like, I didn't know what carbs were. Oh, yeah. He's like, hey, homeboy, don't be eating them carbs, homeboy. That's how he talked Tommy Terrific. And like, I was like, what the fuck's a carb? Uh, and, you, you know, whatever, right, fast forward. Awesome, and, and yeah, stop drinking soda, stop do whatever. And then like, it just started falling off. And that's kind of how, yeah. how it happened. But yeah, like, I've been lucky enough to maintain it for the most part. But like, bro, like, I, I, my, I'm naturally like, Fat kid at heart, so like I'll smell French fries and gain like two pounds just by smelling them. Yeah, I would have never known that. Fun fact yeah. of the day. Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, you look good, bro. Uh, yeah, man, uh, no pause. So what's the what was the the well? This guy's been doing like steam rooms oh, with like seven dudes. Yo, the crazy thing is I don't even tell you what happened after I seen you. I went to Korea, then I went to China. 
in uh oh recently right, yeah. Yeah, yeah 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 right after i seen you when no, I, came. I i remember i was talking i was like where are you you're like i don't even know yeah <laughs> when i came back i came back with bell's palsy which is crazy like, what bell's palsy what's that which is like my oh, right shit. side is like numb like i can't feel my right side like, i didn't want to like ask i thought you went just went came from the dentist no nah, no nah, i oh, came back shit. from uh justin bieber just had it too but uh, yeah, yeah i remember that yeah like when i came back from china my shit was like no, yeah, yeah then it's it was like, like my half eye. your face paralyzed. Yeah, yeah so I have my shit. This is like literally a couple of days after I seen you. Like I'm still getting better, but what the fuck? Yeah, this shit was How did real. You, what from food? Just like I don't even know. They said it could be from like exhaustion and stress. I was really stressed in China, but I'm not gonna lie to you. Like I was in my room for like three days. I wanted to come out. No, China's a tough one, man. Bro, China, China was tough. Dog. China's a spot where like no English, no English yeah. menus. They're like not really. Oh, like open, open to, to tourism, tourism like that. Like, yeah. it's Bruh, like yo, China it's was like a disaster. I've only dog. been to Hong Kong, which is more like, you know, a lot yeah, of I went to Macau. Oh, yeah. Hong I went Kong to Macau legit. before, yeah, dog. Yeah, yeah. But, but like, like China, China, you go to like mainland China, like, it's not what you think. Like, like Chinese food, what you think is Chinese food. Oh, no, I watch those food shows, man. It's wild. Bro, I went to a spot, I never forget, and Echo was with me. I think I ate rice only. And they were like, uh, aquariums, aquariums, little uh, fish, fish tank, tank things of like snakes, snakes. Yeah. and people were like, go, go pick, pick out their snake, snake and cook, cook the snake. Sure, it wasn't eel. I mean, it's a sea snake, but yeah. I think it was. It might this is like all kinds of weird snakes, shit, bro. I, I mean, eels are disgusting too, but, but they're like a snake to me. Look like a big ass cobra. Bro, China is just like I don't know if I ever want to go back to China, dog. Like, I was stressed out. Like the first 15 minutes, they tried to finesse me. Like some lady was like. Come to this bar, so I go there. Like, they try to charge me like oh, 600, yeah, yeah, yeah. 600 were like 10 shots or something. Dude, that like, happened to my boy. $600? Yeah, so she like tells me, like, yo, come to this bar, so I go there. I order a shot of Hennessy, it's like 50 bucks. She orders 12 shots of uh, Jaeger. My son, I'm like, why 12? She's like, oh, you got to order by 12. What? So I'm like, all right. I'm like, all right, one round. I'm like, Shanghai? Yeah, I'm in Shanghai. Dude, so I'm like, that should happen to my boy. So I'm like, yeah, I'm like, all right, cool. She orders another 12. I'm like, I'm like, how much of these is 13 for each shot? I'm like, so you're ordering 12 shots, 13 bucks each. I'm like, something in there, right? She keeps ordering them. I tell the dude, I'm like, hey, what's my tab? 600. I'm like, hell no. I'm like, wait, the girl worked there or she was just a girl? Yeah, supposedly she didn't work there, but she yeah, like, she brought you in. Like, yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah. No, that, bro. So I'm like, I'm like, I'm not paying for this shit. I'm like, I don't even know her. They're like, no, it's your girl. I'm like, nah, I don't know her. I was like, I'll pay for the Hennessy, the first round. I'm not paying for this shit. And they're like, nah, you got to pay. I'm like, no. I'm like, here's my 200. This is it. Like, you want it? Yes or no? And they're like, all right. And like, I left. But that's how my China trip started. Yo, you're, like, like you're first 20 yeah, minutes yeah. into my trip, bro. I'm like, yeah, nah, fuck that. Nah, my boy got surrounded by like some thugs. Yeah. Like, but same shit. Like, he met the girl outside the hotel. He took, and he, they're like, oh, we'll show you a good time. Let's go to dinner, blah, 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 go to eat. He said he went to the first spot. They had like some appetizers, 600 bucks. What? And he's like, what the fuck? I'm like, whatever. Went to another spot to a bar, same shit. Order match, drinks, blah, blah, blah. And then I think the bill is like two grand. And he's like, oh, fuck, no, I'm not what? paying for this. Yeah. It's like, not, I'm not paying for this. And then three like thugs or security came out and just like surrounded him. I was like we need your credit card like you're paying holy for shit they get down like that in China bro this yeah, shit was dude. weird I'm telling you like that's my first encounter like yeah, I'm like yeah. I'm not coming out either, of my man. room I'm like I'm not coming out of my room I'm only gonna do is eat go walk around and come back and like that was just like the start of the but whole but you were with shit. the whole entourage like the whole we was like with a group but I was in my own world yeah, like yeah. I was like I don't wanna see nobody I don't wanna talk to nobody I'm just Fuck. gonna eat work on mixes Stay in my room, work on edits, and that's it. And like, I got stressed out for three days. Bro. Yeah, she was nuts, man. I'm yeah, not going back to China, bro. That'll numb your face. Nah, for sure, that's bro. That's crazy. That um, shit, and the lady had like no. I should have known. She had glasses with no lenses. That should have been like my what, warning. Is she red like, yeah, I'm like, <laughs> bro. I'm like, bro. That should have been like the red flag. Like, <laughs> she got the glasses with, with no lens? lenses. I'm like, dog. Uh, why party rock? I, some leopard pants on. I'm like, chest. why not see the sign? Like. Yeah, that's just that's the sign, bro. Damn, sorry to hear that. Uh, yeah, we yeah. back though. We getting better though. Yeah, man. yeah, nah. How long did it take to get better? 
Shit, I'm still going was through it. it sounds or? like I, I sound like Conway from Griselda right now. I feel like I think it, <laughs> you just like you went to the doctor, right? Yeah, I went they to I like, went down to go to the hospital. Okay. Like I had a gig, like like uh, I want to say like a couple of days after, and like I realized I couldn't close my eye. Oh, I'm like I called my parents. I'm like, yeah, I need y'all to come take me to the hospital. I was like, I was just about to have a stroke or what? Yeah, that's I'm scary. like I'm like just take me to the hospital, and they're like, yeah, you got Bell's palsy. It started with my ear. Like, I had a pain in my ear, but I thought some of my headphones. So they were like, yeah, you got this bell palsy. You got to take this medicine. Oh, well, I was caused by stress. But I was like, I could see why. Like, I literally was stressed out in China, yeah, yeah. bro. Like, yeah. I never felt like that. I was just like, I didn't I didn't even see Ty for like three days. I didn't go eat with nobody. Wait, wait how did you not see him for three days? Why did you guys was, spend cause, so much time? Just because I was, we had like three days off. Yeah. Oh. So it's like. I just was literally in my room just like why did you guys go to the next spot for the the the, the, the break or did you have shows in china we had a, uh, yeah we had a show in china but we had to like leave korea so it was like uh, it was japan korea china then malaysia then indonesia oh wow. shit so it's like damn those three days were like the longest three days i felt like i was there for like a month yeah, bro. all those other countries besides china is like dope it's yeah like china and korea, korea was dope key, like man. we had a great time like i was hanging out with him in japan korean people are dope but china is just like they don't fuck with you first of all no, they don't like paying for shit like was difficult the language they barrier push out the way they just rude yo they bro that's the that's everywhere. the crazy shit like you know when you walk into an elevator like oh you yeah. wait for people to get out no, like yeah. they're they're walking in there pushing you like they don't give a fuck just they like the shit like that part like of the culture same shit Say that again? No, they do the same shit when they're in the States. Like, yeah. Yeah, that shit was crazy to me. Like, you walking on the sidewalk, they're about to hit you with a scooter. It's like, bro. It's like, <laughs> I mean, that, yeah, that's yeah, that's Asian country. Man, it's wild, man. That's their warm welcome, bro. To like, <laughs> welcome, welcome to China. <laughs> welcome to our beautiful land. That's basically like, yo, don't come back. Like, stay out of here type yeah, of shit. Yeah. But, man, I, I'm trying to remember. Um, I think the first time I met you, remind me. I think this is a tr this is a fact. I'm was in Miami. Miami on the yep. beach. On the beach. On the no beach. Way. There was a, a Latin a rap conference slash rap. There were rappers. There was a Latin rap conference. Oh no! Wait, no, 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 no. Winter music conference. Yeah, that's, that's why I was yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. But they had a mech, like they had like a rap like a Spanish conference too at the same. Oh, time. they did same time. So there was this group called T Weapons, and you were DJing with them. Or yeah, what was I just started linking with them. I met him through Gusto at ah. Power 106, yeah. Dude, so yeah, because we, we were, me and Saif were fucking with them playing their record. They had a record called uh, Mira Mira, yeah, right? Yeah, with Pitbull. That shit was hard, yeah. And so y'all we, went to go meet Pitbull that we time, We were there. Right? Dude, we stayed at his house. Yeah, oh, y'all went to go meet Pitbull. It's like 9 house. in the morning. I'm done partying and was I see him at the Calle beach. Was it during Calle Ocho? Yes. That's what it was. Yes. Okay, yep. It was during Calle Ocho, and, which is like this huge like Cuban, like, like, kind of like a parade. It's like the Puerto Rican Day Parade, but for Cubans. Yeah, yeah. in Miami, bro. And that was the first time because you know we known Pitt since yeah, the come yeah. up, but I was like, bro, this is like the president. He's like, the king of that. Yeah, he yeah. was. We're going into all the local like Cuban restaurants. He, everyone's giving him a hug, kiss. He fucks with everyone. He's, He's like, like, like the people's champ, yeah, right? Yeah. He was that guy. And I was like, yo, this guy's like a star. Yeah, but this yeah. is before he was a star. Like, it was before oh, Kulo, all that. This was like early Damn. pit. This is like him working his way towards yeah, that. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. But he was I mean, Kulo big. was the one. I mean, Kulo was the one. <laughs> Kulo, Kulo was the one. Um, but yeah, he, uh, that was the first time I met you on yeah, literally on the, on the beach on the sand. It was like eight in the morning, the sun coming. And then up. It, we were t I was I didn't know if he was from Miami or New York. And then he was like, "No, I'm from LA too." Yeah, and I was like, "Oh shit!" So then, yeah, that was the first time. You remember the first time we met? I don't. Vanity. Wow. With Ray J. Damn, that's crazy. And you're, uh, I was like, "Yo, I'm Ray J's DJ." I was like, "I'm like." What he was probably like, who? <laughs> I don't know. I think we was, was around around that time. We were yeah. probably hosting like a lot of shit. I know I had a picture with Ray J and you were there that night. You yeah, might have been yeah. in the picture too. Yeah. And that was like, what? Oh. Now that I think about it, I kind of do remember that night vaguely though. Yeah. Now that Wait, you what, mentioned that. What year did you start DJing for Ray J? This is like Sexy Can I. So like maybe 2008. Yeah, that was around that time. Like maybe I want to say like 2008. You guys still friends? Yes. Yeah, yeah. I'm thankful for that Yo, guy. Yo, he lives. Man. He's a great guy, dude. I he, see him all the time at the win. Yeah. Oh, really? And the, so, in so, Vegas? Yeah. And my host was like, yeah, he lives here. I'm like, what do you mean he lives here? It's like, yeah, he lives here. At the win? That's what they said. Or say. lives in Vegas? 
at the win. Like what? basically, he's there every weekend or some shit. Probably. And like, dude, he's with his whole. He got family. that type of bread, bro. Yeah, Ray J. He's, he's always he's always been win rich. on a weekend. He's always crazy. been rich. As long as I met him, yeah. he always had money. So I wouldn't doubt it. Ray J's always had like his hands on like the most random shit, like. Like you see billboards of him with like a like a scooter company. Yeah, the Ray the scooty bikes. Like just random like Raytronics, all that. It's like like Nick that. Cannon. Yeah. <laughs> like you know, the just, hood version of Nick just Cannon. Got yeah. Mad bread and mad their hands on all kinds of stuff. Yeah. Plus, I'm sure he was getting He got the T V money, yeah, the getting, Kim K money. Getting like he was like a producer. The sex the tape money. <laughs> sex tape. Sexy money. can I? The sex tape money was a was that a one off? Was that a payoff? Uh, nah, they still get they still get residual checks. <laughs> what? They still get residual checks. Damn, I thought he got wiped off the internet. <laughs> no. Nah, Were you gets, with them pre sex tape? I met her right before I dropped. I got I had the video before it came out. Like I remember there was a box on like, hey bro, I'm trying to see Kim K dog. Like I wanna I, I, I didn't know like, who I'm she not was gonna until that. I was like, I'm not gonna lie, bro. I was like, I gotta see this Kim K shit. Like <laughs> I got the little early copy. Probably started at the crib somewhere too. Wow, a physical copy. A physical copy, DVD. Damn, Kim K Superstar. So, all right, so you saw it completely change yeah. after that. Oh yeah, I saw it like. Which like, like this. another. He was hiding before that came out. He was like not doing shit. He was like just playing video games. Then Sexy Cannot came out. I don't know the video or Sexy Cannot came out, but it was like all around that same time. And like he was just chilling, like he didn't go outside. He was just waiting to see what's happening. Then like they both dropped, and like it was like everybody wanted to be around. Everybody wanted to be the next Kim K. And yeah. like we would go like airports would be like anybody from like 18 years old to 50 years old, like <laughs> just ladies, gross. yeah, like everything, guys, women, just like I seen the video or. You know what I mean? Like it was a big thing. Like no, it's huge. and this was before IG too, so yeah, it's like. Yeah. Way before I see, bro, it was pandemonium. I'm talking about well, if the this stories was like, were was not, not even Twitter. Twitter, Twitter from just 09. had barely came yeah. out. Like Twitter was like maybe new at the time. Yeah, brand new, brand new. Damn. So it was just chaos. It was, bro. I'm telling you, it was like chaos. Like everybody knew who he was from the video, the song. It was like it would trip me out because, like I said, it could be like a white guy who's 50, <laughs> or it could be. Oh, um, white guy that's hit, he's uh, definitely watching that. Or <laughs> Latin, yeah, or like Latin <laughs> Armenian girls that just want to be around because they want to be the next Kim K. Right. Damn. So it's like shit. a big spectrum of like people. To this day, I haven't seen anything like it. Because yeah. it, it was new at the time. Yeah. got to think, like it was brand new. Like social media was kind of just really getting yeah. into the swing of now, things. Nowadays, it's just too, there's too much of that. Yeah. yeah. Like it's too many people becoming famous overnight, but also it just lasts it's literally 15 minutes of fame type shit. But it's crazy because I really got to see it like firsthand, like how this person can go from here to there and like the shit that she did to get to that point. Yeah. And even to stay relevant, like the shit they do, like the whole family is like, it's just crazy. Like the mom is nuts. Like, yeah, I, I, I can imagine. Everything nuts. is planned. Everything has a price tag on yeah. it. It's smart. Nah. They all got bread. It's, Every single one of them. It's smart, it's but famous family in the world. I always say they—that's the by any means necessary family, man, because they're gonna do anything to stay hot. Like, yeah. Yeah. whoever's a new hot basketball player, rapper, Bad Bunny. What's your thoughts on Bad Bunny, Kendall? Clout. That's what they do. It. They know what exactly what they're doing. They're doing. I like clout. see. I see photos of them like talking. I'm like. What are they talking yeah. about? Yeah, like well, at the Drake concert, everyone was like, "What the fuck are they be talking about?" She looks like super. She has to really pay attention to like. Him. It's like almost like an arrangement. Oh yeah, like that's how I look at like an arrangement. Like you're gonna go talk to this guy because he's the hottest, biggest artist that you could possibly do get you think, your hands on. Do you think, say Kendall or or one of them, they start talking to a guy and they just like obsessed with this good looking guy, nice guy. Do you think the mom, a normal guy, normal, nice, good looking guy, right? And I don't know which one of them, but they, they just, they're talking to this guy and they, they hit it off. Do you think the mom slides in and says like, yo, not a good look. Like we need to, we need to find you someone at this. Like they have like standards. I for, think they're the so programmed. Fame and like popularity at the moment. Like if they're popping or not. I just think they're so aware of it now that like they know what it is like. The mom don't even have to tell no so more. They just, like they just they know, just like chase it they just chase it. They're chasing like 
it's kind of like a high like they like the high that they get from being around this guy yeah it's like it's they probably don't get excited being around next to a regular guy like yeah they want to be around bad bunny like oh shit yeah yeah i think they treat themselves like a brand like brands yeah they don't do a collab like a collab unless, yeah, unless yeah, the, brand, uh, yeah. and that's uh, the brands align yeah. like if it's all right you know louis vuitton's not going to collab with just anybody but Blue, if, forever but 21 if, they're not going to collab like yeah 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 but, but yeah, it, that's how it, it makes look at sense. It. They'll do it. Nah, for like sure. Like Supreme collab. Supreme was the yeah. hottest shit at the time, so it was like, okay, let's do it. But um, they wouldn't just collab with a streetwear brand just because yeah, they not, wanted a. Streetwear they're not collabing brand. with Fashion Nova. They're not doing that. Like. <laughs> yeah, damn, that's crazy. Well, that would be something though. <laughs> so, how long was your run with with uh, Ray, Ray J? J? I want to say like five years, maybe. But he was a great dude, man. I love that guy. Did everything from the TV shows. Oh, yeah, you were on the show, too. Touring, like, just a good dude, man. Like, I got love for that guy. Like, always be thankful for everything he did. Always been cool. I don't got nothing bad to say. He called me to this day. Shit, what you need? I'm there. Like, That's that kind dope, of friendship. Does he so. still do music? Yeah, he did. He just dropped a song with Bobby Rackins the other day. But uh, Oh, shit. One is thing the, about him, is that this, the is the, this is the reason why I stopped working with him music-wise. Because one time I was like, yo... Like, you don't want to travel. It's like, bro, I'm rich. Like, I don't got to travel like these other artists. Like, I don't depend on music. He's like, I do it, like, for fun. He's like, I don't have to go to Europe and go do a run. He's like, I'm rich. I smoke good. I eat good. If Damn. I want to go, I go. Not goals. Yeah. <laughs> so after that, What's I was like, main, all right. What do you I think was, his main, like, his main bread and butter? Like, where do you think the, the majority of his money came from? TV? Like he just saved T- it, or, or just probably common. I mean, his family became wealthy because of Brandy, obviously. So they had family wealth, mm. TV show, music, the video. Then yeah. his own he TV show. In, like, he had three number one TV in, shows yeah. himself. So it's like three. Yeah, like, Love or Ray J. The first two seasons, uh, and then he had the family business. Ah, shit forgot about family so he was getting it he was getting it all over you know what i'm saying and like when i asked him that question from carson too yeah yeah mississippi but but then he moved to carson but yeah he was in carson for a little while yeah yeah center view so five years with ray j and then i'm trying to like before that i was with the lean like a cholo guy like that was like Wait, what was his name? Yeah. Down? Yeah. No way. I swear. That's the funny Wait, thing. all right. So T Weapons. T Weapons. And I met the Lean Like a Cholo guy in New York at the Latin Rap Conference. He's like, yo. He's like, uh, he was like a dude from Oxnard. So he had like Snoop Dogg, Coke, like all the old school cats. Yeah. I'm like, all right. I told him, I was like, yo, you ever need a DJ? Hit me up. I was like, you serious? Real quick. Did you always like, say i want to like dj for an artist or did you just fall into the, to that i kind of fell into it just because i just wanted to be down like i always used to look at like tv and like rap and be like i'm gonna be there somehow like i don't want to be a rapper but yeah. i was like i want to be a part of it yeah yeah, yeah so yeah. like i just wanted to be in the mix of things and like see it but uh yeah it just kind of happened like on accident with the gusto thing was like oh shit y'all don't got a dj shit where's the show miami i'm gonna show up and pull up wow so i just wanted to be a part of this shit. oh was that your first time meeting them too uh t webbins yeah when my gus no that was that was the first time i did a show with them oh got it got it got it but yeah we hadn't done there was like yo we got a show mine was like shit i'm pulling up all right cool you want dj yeah all right shit let's go wait so then (laughs) down (laughs) wait so then you started dj for down so he calls me you know the record right yeah yeah, yeah. he calls (laughs) me one day like yo (laughs) Side he calls side. me like, yo, right, I right, got right. this song called Lean Like a Cello. Oh, yeah, I think it's Kilo. time. Yeah. It's Carlo. He yeah. called me like, yo, I think it's time. Like, I'm like, all right. And then, like the song was getting big. And like. That I shit remember, was so big. At least did, in LA for sure. No, it was big. Like I went Vegas to go do a show with them yeah. in like Iowa or some shit. Yeah. It was like what? Soldier Boy and like him. Bro, the whole sh- little kids like. Who produced that again? Uh, Fingers. Fingers. Oh, wow. Damn. Wait. Fingers from San Diego? Nah, what? from uh, he's from LA. He did like a lot of like the badass stuff. He's the one white dude. Summer he did yeah. talk about yeah, summer nights. Uh, he might be from San Diego actually. Nah, nah, no, no, that's a is DJ. He no, you talking about DJ from Finger? Oh, Finger okay, okay, oh okay. right, right. Now Fingers is yeah. yeah. He no, was Fingers on the producer. Summer nights. Yeah, the producer. Okay, yeah, he okay. did like summer nights. He did like a, a lot of the vocals for the locals, like the big shit. But 
Yeah, summer nights. Was he was he did like he was like the alchemist of the Latin yeah. world. Yeah, right? <laughs> that's the best way to put it. The <laughs> no, for real, because he had like ill samples, but he was a dope yeah. producer. And he like, did the talk like, box. The Latin rappers really right, fucked right, with right. him. Yeah, even though he's a white guy. Yup, he but, did the talk box like the whole. Yeah. Oh shit. Damn. It was Zapp and Roger. Wait, Wait, so you, how long were you with Down? Like maybe a year of that, bro. A year. Maybe. I couldn't do it. <laughs> Why would I have This to? wasn't me. Like that yeah. whole scene, like I'm not an essay. I'm not into that shit. Was, was there a lot of like like fucking trouble going yeah, on? Yeah, there was. Like there people was. trying to roll, roll up on him? Like He would get so lit, bro. One time he got so lit. Start and like uh, Mr. And Capone and them. Like Mr. Capone was like the big guy too at the time. And like. He was so lit, he did something crazy, and like they were gonna go crazy on all of us. And like Mr. Capone let us slide, basically guess the pass, like, nah, they're good. Like he just lit, let them go. Damn. We were all beat up by like a hundred guys. Damn. Oh my god. And bro. Mr. Capone, I still tell this down, like, yo, bro, thank you for like letting us slide that day, cause <laughs> Tony was like a hundred essays about to just beat Holy us all shit. up. And he's just like Capone's nah, from where again? SGV. SGV. And he just let a start like he was like, nah, he's lit. Let him go. They're good. Damn. I remember going up to my room, looking back downstairs, seeing all the girls, just thanking God, like, thank you, God. <laughs> thank you shit. for like letting me slide on this occasion. Jesus. So then you were like, nah, I'm done. And after that, I was like, I'm cool. And then what was the next thing? I was like, I'm just gonna just DJ. And then you know what it was? I quit my job. I was like, I'm gonna just be a DJ. And where then, was your job at? In Palmdale, I was a home loan officer. A home loan officer? Yeah. Home loan helped people get houses. And I was like, I was good at this shit. Good credit. How long, how long have you been DJing? I guess we didn't even like 90, follow the whole Since 94. Journey. Since 94. 94, yeah. And you started in what? 93? 94, so I was like I started in 98. Were you a hard house DJ? Rebel, Rebel Familia? Well, I started, originally when I started, I started drum and bass, hip hop and house. And then I got into the hard house. Well, Actually, no. It was drum and bass, break beats. Because at that time, like, DJ Icy was big. So, yeah, like, yeah. break beats. And then... Uh, Orlando. Shit. Yeah, like, all that shit was yeah. big at the time. So, that's really what I started with. And then, eventually, the Hard House, like, evolved into that. We was yeah, doing Hard that. Hard House came in, like, a little... Like, 96. Mid, yeah, 96, mad, 97. Mid, mid 90s. Like, 96, 97. That Hard... I was just... We just had Richard Vision, and I talked to him about you and me and japan oh yeah i was telling you were like that. you were like oh no he was part of this group and i was like wait what the and bro they still play their shit at like sporting games i guarantee it and then he played me the video like um and then i told him because he was telling us about that mo that yeah. era and i was like oh shit it's like jock jams so i should like jump jump yeah, yeah. a little higher jump jump, jump. Yeah. Like, oh shit jock e -I -N -G -O, like i was into all that so he yeah so then we were talking about hard house and he was just saying how bad he was like nah, i never got i never liked it he goes it's all just out of key distorted this that and i was like dude i was like listening ba listening back just like on youtube and i was like dude everything's like 180 bpm <laughs> distorted it's like it sounds so bad but back then like i liked it like it sounded cool we didn't know any better yeah. like it was just like the cool thing like and i think it was it wasn't like something that i discovered on the radio or uh you know just in my room like it's something i saw at a party and people dancing and that experience getting introduced to something in that setting is like oh shit you know it's like when the first time you hear a song you're like it's cool and then you hear it live it's like a whole different experience or even better you know because you work with artists the when you hear a record in the studio where they made it or while they're making it, it's a whole different feeling no, than facts. hearing it for the first time. Like if you heard it while the, the artist is making it and then you played it for us, we're not going to have the same right, reaction. Right. Like it's, it might take us a minute to like, oh yeah, actually I do like that record. There's not that many records no, that feel, first listen, that. you know? That's but how yeah. I feel about Or Nah. I heard Or Nah like a long time before it came out. It was supposed to be a song for Wiz Khalifa. And Wiz didn't want the song. And he gave it to Ty, like, yo, you could keep the song. I'm not going to use it. You want this or nah? Yeah, basically, right? <laughs> and that's Ty's biggest song to this day. Yeah, bro. The weekend jumped on this. It's no, Diamond, I think. that's got to be paranoid. It's Diamond. No, or nah is the biggest song. Well, that, no, or not, nah? like, number-wise. Like, number-wise stream. What? I'm talking about certification. I think it's 
Diamond. Yeah. No way. Might be Diamond now, but it's huge at the R&B parties, man. And and I remember the label telling us like, "Yo, it's not gonna work. It's too raunchy. It's too racy." Yeah. And like, I was like, "Nah, this is it." Like, I would tell him like, "Yo, this song or not nah, is gonna be something." And like the label was like, "Nah, it's not. It's it's mm -hmm. cool, but it's too like raunchy." And like, I just remember I was like, "Yo, I told you so." Like, this is the one. And it's, it's just shit like that. It's like you hear a song and you just know, like, like this is going to be something. And but you heard it in the studio. I heard in the studio. So like that's, I, what, that's what I'm saying. Like I didn't hear it for I, seven more months. And I would hear, be like, yo, this is going to, like, yeah. that song or now you have something. Yeah, the yeah. setting the setting of hearing something for the first time always kind of changes the way you see it, you know? So, yeah, like Hard House, you'd see it at a party. You see these dudes or girls, like, just battling you're like damn this looks fucking fun <laughs> it was just like fun and then and then i you know i was djing the arena the biggest party of all ages in la period and and irene's in there banging it out and you're just, and the whole, bro i'm talking thousands of yeah. kids just downstairs dancing. and then like he was upstairs so upstairs, upstairs like for me i'd have to go upstairs because i need like my balance i need like my hip-hop yeah yeah and we was talking about this pistol grip pump was like the, the essential trip. LA record, like in LA, the DJ had to play Pistol Grip Pump at With one the party point. break too. Like yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, no, the original, bro. But it was so hard to get. I remember, I had a like eBay was new. <laughs> yeah, I bought it on eBay, one copy, and it was like forty bucks, which is unheard lot, of at yeah. the time. Like at the time, Same like thing. forty bucks for that's one. Like record. A, that's like a that's like an import considered import yeah. price. And they were colored vinyl too, right? Because I remember colored vinyl. I had one that was red and one that was like orange. Orange. And I was so mad. I got the it pissed me one. off, dude. Because <laughs> so, it, it didn't match. <laughs> funny story, I got my double yeah. like a few months ago because yeah. I started buying records again, like yeah. jazz and like breaks and stuff. And I saw one in like the ninety nine cent bin, and I was like, I gotta buy you it. Got to. Yeah. I have to buy it just because. So I bought it. But yeah. that was like a staple, like L.A. parties. No, you had I, to play yeah. Pistol Grip Pump. Like, it was I was like the dreams and yeah. nightmares of the time. Like, yeah, bro, you had to play it. Boys. Every time I turn on the radio, driving to Ve uh, driving from Vegas to L.A. to buy records, turn on Power One Six. It's always someone doubling up Pistol Grip Pump. Pistol Grip Pump. Oh, it's bro. pump, pump, pump. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, E Man was yeah, yeah. had the pump, pump, pump version. He still plays that shit on his stream. Okay, <laughs> E Man. Wow, that. somebody said I went to Unity for hip hop. Unity was crazy. I didn't get to go, but I know about oh, it. Oh, Unity. That was um, uh, Big B. Loud Records. Yeah. They used Unity. to bring like Wu Tang. Like yep. all the loud records. And artists. that was like, was that, who did, um, that wasn't, um, what's it called, right? AC Alone and Freestyle Fellowship and all those guys? No. Nah, what nah. did they do? Oh, shit. Damn. I think, wasn't it Freestyle, just called Freestyle Fellowship? Nah, they had a, a party too. Fuck. It'll come to me. Were you big on the like a in that back? Did you have a backpacker oh, what? Uh, era? What? I think everybody had a backpacker what? era. That beats all that like dilated Jake. I just seen evidence like two three weeks Visionary. ago. Oh, I remember we would listen to Visionaries uh, during Twitch streams yep, yep. back then. So I just seen evidence about two three weeks ago at the Larry June show. I, was, I told him I said, "Yo, man, like to this day, one of the best hip hop shows I ever seen was you guys in Jurassic Five. Wow." Like at the glass house, wow. word of mouth tour, like that era, like I remember that era. I met, I, I met Dilated and they signed my record at Stax in That's the it. store. Then I met the. Guys. I opened for a J Five when they were on that tour. The word of mouth tour. Yeah, that was one of the best tours Actually, I ever been to. The last my, uh, I love you hip hop pose this week. That picture of me DJing. That was from that that show. Oh, he wow. said Project Blow. Was, uh, Project Blow. Yeah, I just I was about to say it. Yeah, Project Blow. Yep. Was um. Was Dilated uh, and J5 too commercial for you? Because I know you were like... No, back, I love I loved everything about Dilated. Really? They were yeah. the epitome of LA well, hip-hop at that bro, time. Just just that a bad boo boo and just like... I wasn't like that. Like I was underground rap, but then like... Company flow? Like I like co-flow, but also like... You know, I didn't get into, get into like Sage Francis and like no, I didn't Ryan Stairs. That, I didn't no. get into all that. I didn't get to that. I didn't get into uh, Shapeshifters. Yeah. None of that shit. I was more into like Jedi Mind Tricks. Still Wu-Tang. Yeah, yeah, Jedi. Jizza. I was definitely Wu-Tang, definitely Tribe. I was, Remember? I, was, I was big on like Quasimodo. My brother yeah, Quasi. Yeah, yeah. Loop Lu Pack, Lu Pack, Lu Pack Lu was Pack. my shit, bro. Anything Lu on Stone Throw. Yeah, yeah Stone Throw. Yeah, I, yeah, I interned for him. I was like, yo, but I want to intern But the first time I heard Quasimodo and I was like, what is 
this. Do you did you go to Vegas back in the days, like around like the nineties at all? A little bit. So I worked at a record store called Hip Hop Site. Yes, yeah, see, I didn't so, get to go yeah, to record store. But it was online there. too, so like I also know uh, customer service and shit. So wow. Shout out to Warren Peace and Pizza. <laughs> did Warren own it? Own yeah, it? Warren Pizza were the wow. owners. And I was a head of customer service. I remember <laughs> I went I went to Vegas with some shit called the technicians. It was oh, like yeah, a DJ the, the conference, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That, that was the time. It was like revolution. That was like, I remember I just got my two-way. Yeah, yeah, I was yeah. like gas, like technician. So that was like my first taste of like Vegas hip hop, like in the scene kind yeah. of like. The two-way was like the, that. That. that was like the shit, The Sky bro. Cager. Oh, yeah. The, yeah. yeah the most I wanted, I, tell. I, yeah, Sky Tell. I got one and the only person I talked to was Warren because mm -hmm. he was the only contact I had. <laughs> it's funny, uh, e you know, Echo, it was like an industry standard. So Echo, Vice. All the guys I was around back then, they all had the the Motorola two way, and I was just like a young broke kid, but I wanted to be down. Yeah. And like, I had the small one, like the it was like a cheap. <laughs> yeah, version. Yeah, yeah. I still have it. I'll yeah. post a photo of it. I had this small, like cheap version, and um, <laughs> I only had Echo and Vice as my contact. So like, I probably would like bug Same, them. Yeah. I'm so young. I'm like, hey, what's up, man? <laughs> right. Crick is like, and you know, you would get charged per character. Oh, so you shit. would shorten your sentence. Do you remember what, that? What plan did you have? I don't know. My plan was like that. Mine, was around back then. <laughs> I, mine was like a Verizon one, bro. And it was per character. That's Even crazy. text messages yeah. were like that. So you would have to like say, what up? Or like W H T. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that and it, and then the then what the flip phones uh, the razors came the in. The sidekick came in not in not after. long ago after that though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sidekick, sidekick, sidekick won. changed the game. Sidekick that shit was a game. game changer, bro. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll tell you the first time. So we're all on on the two way, and then we're at Vice's crib, and then Nick Cannon, uh, Vice was really close to him, came over, and he's like, "Oh, look at this phone I just got." Whatever he had like a deal with T-Mobile, and he's showing it to us, and I was like, "Oh my god, this is crazy." um and then i'm looking at the phone and then like it was like a text you know the text would pop up on the front yeah, it was yeah. like christina christina million <laughs> and i like said oh you got a text he goes whatever like i'll do to get to it later and i'm thinking like bro you better reply to this shit right now before i do <laughs> it was fucking wild yeah no the sidekick was a game changer, like game changer bro i got the internet on there too. aimer Aim, and you could see who else had the sidekick with the little uh the icon on the side yeah Damn. i'm waiting for uh apple i'm waiting for apple to to do the away messages you know you got the do not disturb oh, yeah, yeah i want you to be able to customize it so you'd be like <laughs> you know taking a shit or whatever <laughs> like your people would put like yep. song lyrics It'd just be OD. all kinds of shit now here's a question blackberry or the sidekick Ooh, i was a sidekick man. guy myself personally man blackberry. i had both though I'm gonna go i had both that of one course time. you blackberry. had both everybody but i'm gonna i'm gonna say blackberry because i gave up the sidekick for, for the, the blackberry, blackberry. Yeah, yeah the blackberry, the blackberry evolved changing. a little bit better yeah, right? yeah yeah bbm yeah king yeah. what pain? was the biggest what was the biggest difference between like what made everyone switch to black it was the size and the typing yeah. well the typing was the same but i think the sidekick was just bulky. i just think the blackberry was more business like yeah the I sidekick was more is. social we and you know like jay-z yeah, and like, like you actually like started sending about emails and yeah. like closing deals on the black way the sidekick was like you got bitches yeah you trying to see who was on aim i think that's i think it was bigger like the blackberry was bigger for emails yeah, yeah that's emails what I'm saying. was like well, sujit was on the blackberry till like 2018 or 19. yeah i remember until they that. discontinued it yeah and then a27 said the palm pilot damn i remember where you had the little the little I the palm pilot. yeah i lose the pen so fast Bro, i never that's the one phone i never had oh it wasn't a, i didn't have the phone version i just had Rock, i just had a, a palm pilot E Rock said, "Well, Suja is probably still. He still has a BlackBerry, right? Hey, can you imagine if we knew E? Well, we knew E Rock back then, but E Rock on the uh, the the Timo uh, the Sidekick Away messages. No, E Rock. Oh my god. Oh my e -Rock god. E Rock was probably dude. the type that had his, his two way and then like tuck his shirt under it, so everyone, <laughs> so everyone would see it. The big uh, silver two way. <laughs> e Rock, can you can you co sign that? You you tucked it in so you could see the phone right here on the. In hip. all fairness, I, I want to say everyone that had that did. That. Oh no, I I had a fucking <laughs> case like that would show off the phone. I see photos of me and I had a big old black <laughs> leather case for my sidekick and it's on my belt and I look so stupid. 
I you had said a, the silver one, yeah. I had the so Mr. Stupid. Cartoon one. I had the Mr. That was the, one. That one and the D. Wade was like the two. Yeah. The Wade one. was the white and gold. It's like white and like brown. Bro, kind of. LRG had a green like, one. Yeah. It, it came out like at the tail end. Those three were the top three. Yeah, though, yeah right I had there. the cartoon one. so fire. I still have it. Them shit's go over a lot of money sealed right now. I was looking the other day. It's like, yeah, my shit ain't I, wonder, I was like, I wonder how much you know, a couple I, thousand. Remember, you see that shit on, um, like on the news like a few weeks ago or a month or two ago where the, the first iPhone ever, oh, yeah. stock sold for like, what, 27 000? That's what made me look at the price of the BlackBerry. I mean, uh, the, the Psyche. I, I have what's, the first I'm iPhone at the house right now, at my parents' house, but it's broke. I guess cracked. And I have my BlackBerry right here. Oh, yeah. I have it. Uh, yeah, I was just I talking about it earlier. <laughs> I, can't, I swear, I'll, I'll go grab it. <laughs> Let's go nah, grab, yeah, I would grab, grab it. Grab it, man. Grab it one time. <laughs> I, I, I found my sidekick two not long ago. It don't there work. was a two? It was whatever the second sidekick was. Like a, it was like a sleeker. Because it was like three of them, remember? There was yeah, like two remember. or three when they came out. The sidekick era. <laughs> there he is. BBM him. Send him your BBM. What's your, what's your, pin? What's your pin? Yeah, send him the pin. Yeah, I have a whole box of like no, blackberries. That's that, one of the. That's like one of the newer ones. That might have been my last blackberry. I used Ever. to customize mine. And then the little, the little joint right here, the little pin. Yep. Damn, yo, that's sick. Bro. I had a gold one. I what used to time. customize it, order shit from Low China. Key, bro, this is a fire. What phone. a time! Yeah. Run it back. Damn, now it's hard to type on it. Holy shit! Anyway, um, wait. So, fuck. What were you, <laughs> we're, we got so we delved like into phones. cell phones. Um, wait, so the backpack era and then yep. yeah, Fat Beats era was amazing. Like on go, when it was on Vermont, yeah, of like course. that was my favorite. That when was it was on one. Vermont, that was I the feel one. like what year did it get to Melrose? I don't remember. I, I, it was later. It was later. Yeah, so definitely it was later. Like, it was it later. It's definitely like I ain't gonna lie. Two thousand. I was a, I was very happy it went to Melrose. Really? Just be. I'll tell you why. It made Melrose even more of a one-stop shop. Yeah. Like, you would go DMC, DMC. go to Melrose, go to Street Sound, you go to Be Nonstop, Be Nonstop. stop at Workman's, get some fat caps. Yep. Everybody always slept on Aaron's records, bro. Oh, Aaron's Aaron? records, oh, yeah, like, yeah. Bro, Aaron, shit. Aaron's again? It was on Highland. Yeah, yeah, Aaron's. I used to go there. It was on Highland, bro. Aaron's record was, I, like, this shit, bro. Damn, I, went, I don't I, remember uh, Aaron's. I remember hearing yeah. Aaron's. I don't Aaron's know. was, like, yep. on Highland and, like, what's the... what's Kind of like by Fat South, but closer to Santa Monica. Yeah, no, I remember. Ah, okay, I remember okay. I walked Aaron's. in there to get some records, and I walked out, and Aaron's I was wearing a visionary was shirt. Shit, bro. Oh, wow. And the dude, the, the clerk that worked there was like, visionary sucks. Jesus. Like, Jesus. <laughs> All right. Let me get out of here. You know what it was? Uh, at that time, it was like very territorial. It was like you were either a commercial DJ or you were a backpack DJ. Like I, I remember at the time, I used to call Gusto a commercial DJ. Because he was like doing the power yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah. And, like at that time, it was like Milton. We're, like, we're playing Dilated Peoples. You're playing Jay Z. Like, yeah. mm -hmm. it was just well, that Jay thing. Jay Z was commercial to uh, an underground guy. Yeah, it, but I'm just saying, though, like at that time, it was kind of like we looked at it that way. It's like either yeah. you're playing commercial rap or you're a backpack DJ. Yeah, 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 it yeah. wasn't like both. Yeah. And like we used to just, we just mess with Gus, like, yeah. You a commercial DJ because he's doing the radio shit, but or back then I think they would call it like Jiggy. Man, you yeah, a Jiggy. Yeah, that's what I'm yeah, saying. Yeah, yeah. Like I still like both, but shit. Yeah. I still like both. But it's just funny how like at that time like it was like either it was either, either or you're like playing dilated and J Five, you're playing Jay Z. Mm -hmm. But it was different at that time, especially because like is there a I I wasn't in the scene, but it was there a place to play the underground stuff out like was there parties like that because i i grew up in the jiggy scene let's be like let's call it like i was playing you know whatever the jiggy stuff was at the time um i remember eminem the real slim shady just came out and i got a promo copy of it and i played it in a in, at a house party in wilmington that day yeah. and the djs were like how do you have this already yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it was like the hottest song and it just came out like i was that guy i was i was jiggy bro yeah hey, I wasn't you had to do it at the I house party you had to do it at the, yeah, yeah at the house party you had to do it. you're not about to go play mob deep at the house party like yeah you might be able to get a song actually off, i would play mob deep i would play uh win or lose for me no quiet storm yeah the uh little kim remix yeah that shit was <laughs> well it. I, I think all the backpack shit i, I played was on mixtapes so but i was also doing like 
I was moonlighting like as a mobile DJ too. I was in a, like a crew, like a mobile DJ crew. So we had like all the jiggy shit too. And you know, and all our crates were combined. So I oh, already wow. knew, I always been like dabbled in like commercial shit. But, I, but at heart, I was a backpacker for yeah, sure. Yeah, same here. Like, and we was kind of talking about that too. It was like the house parties, they were like 45 minutes of house. Mm -hmm. Then we like 15 minutes of hip hop yeah. and mm -hmm. then get back into yeah. the house. It was like those 15 minutes had to be all the jiggy yeah. shit. Pistol grip, hum, whatever yeah. else was popping at that time. But it's just funny how it went. That was like 45 minutes house, 15 minutes hip hop. Yeah. What, what you? got you into DJing? Dog, I wanted to play drums and piano. My parents wouldn't let me play drums. So it's like, damn, what's the next thing I could do? I was like, Why shit. wouldn't they let you play drums? It was, it was they like didn't too want to loud. It. it was like oh. too loud. It was like, the next wow. loudest thing you can do. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> I like music. So I was yeah, like, yeah. I started like, I would make mixes of mixes. So yeah. like, I would record Humpty Vision, Baker Boys, make compilations and sell them at school. Oh, nice. Oh, shit. And like, then I was like, all right, I got a turntable and a tape deck. Then I got two turntables. Then it's like CDJs. It like, How old were you? I was like 13, 12, 12 oh, or 13 shit. at the time. Yeah. 12 or 13 at the time. But you, that's bought your, really, you bought your turntable from selling c tapes? No, nah, I had to be a janitor. I was a janitor at night. At 13? At like 13, oh, 14, shit. bro. I was a janitor at night. I, I wanted to do, you know what inspired me? Remember that Astro? The, the, uh, it was like a page in the recycler. It was like a picture of like all these speakers, equipment, and oh, just the, yeah, Astros. That, yeah. Like I would look at that picture and be like, I want that. I want that. There was a Astro sounds and li sound and lighting. Yeah. And what's the other one? Pro sound. Pro sound. Yeah. Oh, dude. I don't know if I, 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 I talked about me having a catalog and circling shit on the pod before. I never said the name of it. It was Upstairs Records. Upstairs. upstairs I remember that. Yeah. Do you remember that Upstairs from New, they're from New York? Or, or I think they're from the Bay, right? I remember upstairs, yeah. Yeah, I remember Might, that. Maybe Holy New shit. York or the Bay. I don't know, but but there there was an upstairs uh, records catalog, and that's where me and Danny Dice would like circle yeah. the shit we wanted. Well, yeah, just like looking at shit like that, I'd be inspired. Like, y'all want to get that? Want to get that? Not I, I finance all my There's shit. There's something about like equip. Like, I just got a Rev Seven. I know I'm late, but like. I, I love this fucking thing. Just looking at it makes me it's happy, dope, man. And like, I just saw the new. The new pioneer turntable thing. I'm intrigued. I'm like, damn. This I think shit that's looks, the kid in us and like the actual looks, DJing in us. Look, like, yeah. It's like the toys. Like, these our are toys, our toys. Yeah. It's like our grown man toy. Yeah. Like, we look at it like that. Like, as you were a kid, like, you would see it the same way. Like, when you're 15, you would get gas on looking at equipment. Like, just remember when the Vest Tech came out, 05, wow. 07. Like, you'd be like, oh my God. I, was, I think we still have that little piece in us. Like, man. Even if it's a controller. You, did you have a 05 or 07? I had both, bro. I, had, I only had the 05. I, uh, I wanted the 07 so bad, bro. I couldn't afford it. My grandma financed the 07 for me. God bless her. Soul. I saved my Damn. money. I got the 05 from the Pro Sound catalog. In the picture in the catalog was the gray one, the prototype, right? Mm -hmm. When I got in the fucking uh, in the shipment, it was gold, and I was so pissed. Damn. <laughs> I wanted the gray one. Which like, which was the little skinny? Like which was the little skinny one? No, no, I had that, that one. Five. Oh, six. That's no, oh, six. Oh, six. Sorry, oh, six. Sorry, sorry. So the mix, oh, the mix tick is what it's called. Originally, that's what I went to go get right in the O seven. I just came out and like I saw that and I was like, I told my grandma, I was like, I need the O seven. Like wow. it had the little EQ, yep, the little, yep. little. I was like, bro, no, I wanted I the O seven. So Echo had an O seven. He also had an O five. The blue O five. I had that one too. That's the that I, is blue. it the ISP one? Yeah. No, it was just like it a limited just a edition one. It was just a I had the edition. all gold old seven though with the but ISP. But then remember, one. yeah, the the blue ISP yeah, one came the out. Blue right? one, yeah, the blue one had the red one too. Yeah, see, yeah. holy Fuck. shit! I think that's I, th I think we still get that feeling sometimes when we see equipment. Like we still get that. No, I wish I kept all that shit. Me you too. Know? I have nothing. Me like, too. I have my old turntable. I just wish I, I had my old seven. Yeah. I don't I have my old five. I don't have nothing. I got a Mixwell sticker. Yeah. ESDJ Co sticker on it. It's pretty. At the crib lately too, I started buying a lot of old shit like uh. I made it a point to buy an old school techniques receiver, tape deck. Nice. Just so in my room, I have one set of was like 12s, the techniques uh, receiver and the little hi fi recorder. setup. Yeah, just like, mm -hmm. just for myself. Like, uh, when you watch Shortcut Stream, he has like every mixer possible yeah, yeah, yeah. On, on top the wall. of his record yeah. collection. All those guys, like Mello. Mello. He doesn't uh, have his on the stream, though. But no, no, but he, he has, has it. it. Marvel has a good collection. No way. Remember the techniques mixer? 
Yeah. That shit was crazy. What about the CDJs? The Technique CDJs? Oh, I remember those. Technique they looked so CDJs. cool, but they were so ass. Um, who, you know, so when I used to play at Raw, I used to open, Biz Marquee would use those. And wow. they would have to like set, give them a different setup from Warren's turntables. And Biz was on the silver CDJs, and he was using like his little... So I, some peace, I, was, I was on my way here. I was listening to, uh, I listened to Quest Love, his podcast. Mm-hmm. It's amazing. It's just all like music. And you know, he's a nerd. So yeah. he, uh, he has an episode with Biz from obviously years yeah, ago. Yeah, but, yeah. but he was saying, the reason I'm a hoarder and collector and the reason I have 18 storages to this day is because of Biz. Yeah. He was like, Biz is a guy that was the first one out of everyone that was a collector, collector yeah. like whether it's 45 I collect 40 he, and he goes and the re, he goes and the way he got me into it is by he claimed he was the only person in the world with this one record there's only one made and I have it <laughs> and he goes and, and then like they start fighting on the spot yeah. oh, not nah, fighting but arguing and he was just like nah I am the only one with it and I'm gonna explain to you why and I'm gonna tell you I still have it and I guess it was like a, a acetate yeah, of, yeah. A, of a mix that they whatever song i forgot the song that they put up they did a test pressing or acetate which is if you know it's like like the, a duck plate it's like uh the vinyl's like glass almost it's like right, really right. hard it's doesn't real bend thick, yeah and i have i have an acetate of like shade shiest oh no way. <laughs> where i want to be i have the acetate and it and it after like 12 plays it gets more like, yeah, the quality yeah. after every to go play down. it like starts getting more muffled more yeah, muffled yeah. more muffled and then um that was big in like the drum and bass world like they would do the uh duck plates or the acetates and like yeah, you play so, like twenty times, and after that, it's, yeah. a, it's, a, rap. it's a rap. But that's the cool part about it. You know, some people just toss it. Yeah. But it, he says, uh, I guess it was a, a mix, or or a master of something, and they left an instrument out or something, so they like tossed it, and he has it. So anyway, yeah. Um, I just saw that documentary too, the Biz one, about a day or two ago. No way. I think he's the yeah, only that. DJ that has the forty five techniques. Oh yeah. I you seen so. those? Yeah, you know yeah, what I'm yeah, talking yeah, about? Yeah. The 45 techniques. Nah, I haven't seen Dude, those. You know bro, it's a technique. It's the With 45, 45 side, bro. Was there footage all. of him DJing? Because, like, yo, he's a fucking dope DJ, too, man. I never actually heard him DJ, but I just remember just seeing those 45 yeah. techniques. I'm like, bro, like, how do you, yeah. like, how? That's crazy. So, yeah, he's a fucking massive collector. Yeah. And, and uh, yeah, I think you're right, bro. I think th- us geeking out on equipment is just that inner child. Like, is there anything else you collect? uh sports cards oh yeah you oh, were yeah. you would, you would like yeah, I still, stream I still like collect that, yeah. opening yeah, yeah. cards i still collect that sports cards what uh, kind of sp- what sports uh baseball basketball and soccer but uh yeah, what's your most your most prized possession this kobe auto that i got a kobe auto autograph? i get paid like 900 bucks probably worth like 3500 but just the fact is like he's what not year yet. what year kobe it's not even that old it's probably like 2017 but signed yes yeah, it's, it's just nice. the fact it's like you know after he passed away it's like damn we nobody saw that coming so it's yeah. like just made it more special but damn is that market still crazy some like, cards yeah yeah like like during pandemic it became yeah because really yeah, there was no sports and there was no, like no betting so it's like sports betting and the stock market all like in drake one. even got into like cards yeah. right yep he's he was trying to get that lebron logo man it was like for a million or something like that holy yeah. shit um wow oh, yeah, i know i need to add try it to dre's jersey uh, let me stamp it real quick <laughs> real. i got it right here do it Come right on. on the spot diy there we go Let's <laughs> what's go. up jj shout out to dj ever ever so, yeah, we're, we're, we're live on twitch as well but we're recording our pod um, first time so all right when do you meet ty dollar sign I met Ty after the Ray J thing, so I, I told myself, I'm like, yeah, I'm not going to DJ for no more artists. I didn't like how I would rely on an artist. I was like, let me just do you my thing. Do clubs. Do yeah, like, party. I don't want to worry about the artist's schedule, what, if they want to move or don't want to move. Then when I saw Ty, I was like, yo, this guy is pretty dope. I'm like, I think Wait. I could, I, I told myself, I think I could travel the world with this guy. Hmm. Like, at least go around the world once or twice. Right. And like, that was still my goal. Like, that was the only desire I had left. Like, I want to still go travel more. So, like, I remember telling him, I was like, hey, bro. I was like, I'm a DJ for you. We're going to travel the world. And, like, he didn't even ask me. I basically told him, like, yo, 
Wow. I'm going to DJ for you. Like, oh, that's, I'm, I'm your I'm, DJ now. Yeah, basically, I was like, that's what exactly what I told him. I was like, I'm going to give you every little thing that I learned. What year was this? Does he, did he have music out? He probably barely had uh, All Star. Maybe had barely came out. All Star, damn. All Star had maybe barely one. came out. Yeah, I remember that record. So, Who, like, was there I, someone else on it? Him and Joe Moses. Yep. I didn't even know he was on Tooted and Booted for a long time. Mm, like, oh, I didn't shit. even know that that was him. Like, so, like, I just heard he him. He produced on, it, right? Yeah, he produced it. A lot of people it. don't understand how, like, he taught Mustard how to produce. Oh, yeah. I, when I met them, so I met YG, Mustard, and Ty in a mixer meeting at the same time. And they came in, and it was the Tooted and Booted, uh, whatever. And then, like, and, and Mustard was like, yeah, like, I'm learning how to produce. Like, he was just starting to learn. Uh, Ty is teaching me how to produce, and then like there, it was like a whole. There was like a, a click, not not they were in a, pushes a, ink. A, official click. Pushes ink. That's what those. Oh, called. that was. Yeah, they it was were called, a official. Click. Yeah, it's called pushes ink. It was like all of them was like, basically, like YG Ty, and then like they had like the younger cats. Don't call them young name, but I think like the RJs of the world, the O three Greedos. They were like T-Fly. all like, yeah, like all homies. So it's like. They all came from that little umbrella, and they yeah. all branched out and did their own thing. But yeah, I just remember. So just from All Star, you were like, "This guy's a star." I'm like, he has something different. Like I heard it, I'm like, this is different. I'm like, he's like a hybrid. Yeah. Like that's how I looked at him. Like I don't know, he's a rapper, he's a singer. I don't know, he's a producer. So like, to me, it felt like more hipsterish. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like not just like straight rap. So I'm like, I'm like, I think we could travel the world. Like I was like, I'm a DJ for you, and whatever I learned from Ray J, I'm gonna pass on to you and help you, you out. So you are you already stopped. Ray yeah, I already J. stopped you were doing, just doing the Ray your J own thing, thing yep. and then you got it. The funny thing is, I try to link Ray J with Mustard and and uh, Ty. I told Ray J, I was like, Yo, this dude Ty is an incredible songwriter. I'm like, Mustard, his sound is like very simple, but it's gonna work. Yeah. And I remember we took him to his, I took Ray J to a session and like he got high, fell asleep, didn't finish the song. But then like I just remember that session. Like I remember telling Ray J, like, yo, these guys got next. Like, yeah. And then shit, I just Was said, this pre uh Rack City mustard? Probably like, I yeah, say, yeah, like yeah, Rack yeah. City yeah, was this like, is right before that. This is like yeah, definitely before he had Rack City. Yeah, because then must, uh, Ray J would have wanted to do it. Yeah, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Because that's the one that like put my. I remember out. when Rack City had just came out. I went to Germany for the first time. It was like the biggest shit. Yeah. And they're playing all this shit in Germany, like West Coast shit that we don't even play in LA. Yeah. I'm like, I'm from out here. We don't even play this shit out here. Bro, it was wow. so big. I went to Cinespace for like Aoki's night. Mm-hmm. I don't know who was DJing that night. It was a hipster party. Uh-huh. And they played Rack City. <laughs> really? Yeah. And it got and it yeah. got accepted. I was like, it was just probably been out for like a few months, but I was tripping. I was like, why are you playing Rap City? Uh, Rap yeah. City? But yeah, that song that, was big when it came out. It yeah, that big. Center Space Party was like more like up tempo yeah. electro yeah. shit. Yeah. I might you remember it, that party. Yeah. Were you going to like Banana Split and all? I that? went one time, bro. I was there every Sunday. Bro. LAX. You me there. Yeah. I went one time. I remember that That's shit. That's one of regrets, like not ha- like getting to go like Banana Split because I was always doing Sundays at Bot English. My. Goodness. I, I, oh I remember goodness. going one time at LAX. <laughs> my was dope. Goodness. Super dope. It was dope. It was like a whole different era, different time, bro. Like, yeah. Man, such a fun time, bro. When you just think like small, loud, sweaty, just dance party, LAX uh, Sundays. That shit. With the DJ booth on purpose was on the dance floor. You got, you got obviously AM. But they would bring in guests. Fashion would do it all the time. But like random guests, A yeah. Track, um, Aoki obviously was yep. one of the founders. It was AM and yeah. Aoki's party, right? Yeah. So nah, it was it was a great time, man. Great party. Before cell phones and everything too, which makes that like I don't know if we'll ever see anything like that again. No, nah, we talked about that with with Stone, like this that. I remember one of, one of my first times DJing in Hollywood was a club called Shelter. It was me and Sif. We like got uh, we we covered for uh, for Vice because Vice came in. It was AM's gig, 
And then Vice got in because AM got too big. And then at the time when we're running with Vice, he was starting to blow up. So we were just kind of like his plan B. Right, right. And it was me and Sife or like or or just Sife or just me. And we did Shelter. And it was vinyl and it was no bottle service, no cell phones. And like I remember um, Paris there and then some kid literally looked like a kid comes up and he requests, yo, can you play Amrap's MVP, which is hater or love it. <laughs> but, you know, everyone fucks up song. Can you play the birthday yeah, song, yeah, yeah. which is in the club? Yeah, yeah. Amrap's MVP. Uh, can you play Gator Boots, which is still. Yeah. Uh, what is this? Uh, still Fly. <laughs> Gator Boots. Shelter anyway, the guy, the guy that requested hate, uh, Amrap's MVP was Leonardo DiCaprio. That's, That's crazy. I swear to God, bro. I'll never forget. I was just like, and you just, oh, it's Leo. All right, we'll get it on. And that was Leo's it. Leo's still in the club, too. He's still in the club, but he was a young guy back then. And it was, uh, that was Hollywood. It was like, every, it was Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Every night had a spot. And you I knew, remember seeing you, you at knew Element where they early. Would be at. Element. Element was Tuesdays. Yeah, yeah. I remember seeing you so at Element that, early. So that story goes, Element Tuesdays was Vice's night. Like did, I said, I got too Shag big. Mondays. Shag Mondays, which was all hip hop. Yeah. And that was, uh, it was called Snatch. Used was to be it? Sna Snatch, right? Or yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah. Which yeah, was, bro, all right, called. so my first time going to Snatch. Snatch was Monday night. TK was a promoter. All hip hop. And it was like the sexy hip hop part. That station, right? It moved around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was Joseph's for a long time. Yeah, it moved and then it went to station. That was the minute. first time I was in the club, not even old enough to get in, but I was carrying Vice's crates. And I'm like, Buster Rhymes at the bar, uh, Robert Ory, all the young Lakers, which were the, the team at the time, all these Laker guys, like celebrities just at the bar. And I'm just like, whoa, this is different. So it was like fucking nuts. So the Tuesday was Vice, and then they gave it to five. And then five, I think he did it where it just like got annoying. Like he just didn't want to fly out every week, right? Is that <laughs> I, so it's me and Vice were uh, Rotating? every other week. Okay. And I was flying out every, every other week. And then I'm just like, dude, I'm done. Man. I did it for like a year. I'm like, right, I'm over it. So he got over it. And then I think Vice got too busy. So then I just did it every Tuesday. And then, fuck, man, that was <laughs> the and you kept Such that going a, for a while, while right? Dude, f another funny story about Element and Nick Cannon out of all people. So Nick wanted a DJ. He was like, yo, help me. Uh, I want to like start DJ. And I was like, all right, cool. So I like texted him a list of shit he needs. He comes to my old apartment and he had a white Rolls Royce. He Jeez. comes, he comes to the apartment and then I opened the door for him and he's parked in red. And I was like, bro, you're like, you're in red. He goes, if I'm worried about a parking ticket, I shouldn't have a Rolls Royce. <laughs> I was like, that's a bar. So, so fucking, he comes up. And of course, everything I told him he needed, he bought two of. So there was two MacBooks, two hard drives, two this, two that. So I lace him with the, with the library. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> I gave him my entire library. And bro, that day, he's like, when are you DJing next? I said, tonight uh, I'm at Element. He goes, let me open for you. I said, all right. <laughs> so I texted the, the manager or owner at the time. And, yeah. and I was like, yo, uh, James. Nick Cannon's James and Greg. Yeah. I texted them like, yo, Greg Link. Yeah. And I was like, yo, um, Nick Cannon wants to open for me tonight. They're like, that's interesting, but sure. So then, yeah, he pulls up and I. I didn't even make sure he, I was like, shit, I got an opener. I got there late. <laughs> I didn't make sure he was good. I bro, literally, I got there like maybe an hour in after they opened and, and his Rolls Royce was in the front and he was DJing. And like, I could tell some people were like, is that Nick Cannon? Cause this was like, yeah. While and now was in he his prime Nick he Cannon. Popping, yeah. yeah he, he was just like, not even trying to mix and he, he which just is just learning, which is good. Yeah. He was right. literally pressing play he oh, okay. looked bro, so he wasn't I feel trying bad. to catch the beat he was just like stop i feel bad because i feel like he thought i was gonna be there the whole time he looked like his face like his eyes were gonna pop out of yeah of his face bro like he like looked so stressed out and like scared and i got there he was just like so like trying to figure this shit out but Nick yeah that was, hilarious. that was element days <laughs> that was so much fun man yeah uh, when Ch when taj be trying to dj i get on him like hey you want to dj take this shit serious like yeah. i'm like he will get over the fact it's you after a couple of minutes after that. 
you gotta really show up and like really do this shit. Like we take this shit serious. Like this is our livelihood. So it's like if you're gonna step on and DJ, take this shit serious. Like mm -hmm. if not, just step aside. And like I'll get on them like, bro, like you look crazy. If you're whack, you're gonna look crazy. So like if you're gonna step on and DJ, do this shit for real. Yeah. Like what I tell you, him all the time. Yeah, and he, and he actually DJ here on Evers Twitch, uh, and he was bro. You could tell he loves it, and he's good. He was good. Yeah, he saw he's on the USBs. It's like he gets the gist of it. It's like BPM. Yeah, he's a mix. music guy. Yeah, it's like you what got you the think, fundamentals of it. What do you think? What do you think? It you knowing Ty and being around him and in the studio. What do you think it is about him that makes him? Loved by like like Kanye loves Ty bro, Kanye like, you know like what is it that he has? Cause I I always saw like man like Kanye really loves just this West Coast artist like I wa always wondered like obviously I'm not saying he's a talent he's obviously very talented he has a unique sound but like what do you think it is that makes him that special where someone like Kanye? I, I think it's his knowledge of the music like when I first met him. We really clicked just talking music, like talking about like Jay Dilla, Slum Village, like Loop Pack. Like we would talk about this kind of shit. Oh, like, he was in. He was in. He's like, already into all that. Like he was oh, already shit, into that. Dope. So like that's that was where our conversations. I would yeah, try to. I, I would try to stump him. Quest love. He I would try to stump him. Like yo, you don't know about this. He'd be like, of course I know. Him. Like, does he have know about this shit? Like his parents. It does. Yeah, his right? dad was in uh, Lakeside. Yeah. The, oh, so wow. his dad was in Lakeside. So like he was around that, he's just like a real music fan. Like I said, like like a real music nerd. Like I would ask him about shit. Like you don't know about this. He was like, I know about that. What's this sample? He knew. You know what I mean? Like shit like that. I'm like I couldn't stump him. So like that's how we kicked it off. So Dope. just him really knowing music. That's I think where it comes from. Like being a music head. Like whether it's Brazilian jazz, Damn. Japanese punk bad brain like everything around like not just like one thing so like i think him really being a student of the game and like really being about this music shit that's why i want to work with him because it's like i knew his work ethic he's like the type of guy after the we can go on tour for six weeks he's going to the studio right after he's not going to go rest for a week he'd be like i'm going to the studio and we could be a night out yeah i'm going to the studio it could be daytime i'm in the studio it's like that's what allured me to him it's like I know that if he keeps up putting more shots, he's got a better shot of succeeding. Mm. Cause he's always gonna be in the studio creating some shit. He doesn't have to be forced to be in there. So I think like that type of shit is like would draw people to him. Like he's a real studio rat. Mm. So I think that's is, what is the stuff he can't is is the stuff that he did with Kanye. Were those Kanye's ideas and he got Ty as a feature or are those it's collaborative legit, like it's, ties it, ideas no it's, it, it could it could come down to both like i've been there in the, like one of the camps where like there's like 20 people sitting in the room oh yeah the writing camps yeah and, like yeah. it could be it could come from anybody yeah and come from you me whoever's got the best idea and that's how kanye is like like if he has already 12 producers on one track and like he likes someone else's snare he's gonna add the 13th producer just to fix that snare like he's gonna do doesn't matter how many people work on it till it's exactly how he wants it facts and like i've seen that so it's like with with the kanye shit is very out in the open like there's been times where like i got a call from consequence looking for ty to finish some shit I'm like how wow. you get my number like <laughs> why wow. are you calling me like wow. but just shit like that like even when we was in Japan, they were working in Japan. Damn. You know what I'm saying? Like, I got to hear a couple of songs. Oh, you did? Yeah, I got to hear oh, a couple of the songs crazy. too already. It's crazy. It's like, but it's like one thing about that, you just don't, you can hear a song it'll now. never come out. Yeah, it'll never, never come oh, out or it'll be a whole other version yeah, yeah, by the yeah, time yeah. it comes out. So it's dope to like just see that. But yeah, one thing I know about people like Kanye and like Ty, I think they're similar in the sense where like they're real musical. Yeah. And like as far as like genres and like house, because obviously Kanye is from Chicago, so he likes the house shit. Yeah. Hip hop, the JD How, shit. Was Ty, um, and it, I don't want to keep, because this isn't Ty's interview. This is uh, uh, Dre Sinatra's. But does did Ty grow up listening to house music? I think, 
I don't want to say he like grew up grew on it, but when I met him, he was already knowledgeable yeah. about it. Yeah, like he was already knew he was about it. Like, yeah, he, like I say, it's just like a real. He was a real music head, and like one thing that's funny is like he was always big on Anthony Valdez. Like hmm. he's like the Anthony Valdez stand. Like he was always listening to his shit. So I think that had a big influence on him too. Who's Listen, wait? Who's Anthony Valdez? I have no um, idea. KCRW. Oh, what's the, that the shit? Uh, yeah, the he was like the jock. He's the DJ. Yeah. Damn, oh. what's that? Sh- what's that station? Uh, KCRW, where they have uh, it's like they play all kinds of shit. It's an LA station. Yeah, it's an LA it, station. Yeah. It's like eighty nine point nine or oh. KCR comes eclectic, where like they play yeah. the NPR shit, but like they'll play every genre like everything currently like, or he was a dj before he's still on it now but i'm talking about like for the longest time oh, it was shit. like the same station where uh where's the jason bentley was on like all that like the like hipster it was like selection or selection damn okay. like that type, that of, type shit. of shit like like it, selection isn't selection i think without that anthony valdez type shit no shit see i was like bro me growing up it was the beat and power 106 that's it and it, the beat was strictly for melody and julio yeah G. when melody at said night, I, me too I'm like i would to listen to the night, intro like I'm i just want to hear with like his first record yeah like Bro. no matter what because like he's always coming hard like melody's the like one of mix, my seven o'clock menu mix the one of my favorite djs like i always say melody to me like oh, la is the epitome of what i wanted to be yeah. like same like hitting me like dope mixing yeah who are some of the guys you were looking up like to melody we was like up? the one i wanted to be like the would most. you li- like record his tapes yes I mean, his because mixes on tape? yes because to me he was just like good in everything yeah. he's the best bro. mixing cutting radio everything like TV to me show. like like i wanted to be melody like that yeah. was like my role model like Same. just everything to me like i still say to this damn like one of the cleanest legend, bro like yeah. the Super cleanest legend. like cleanest good dude like like i was just model myself like if i could be like somebody that's who i look up to and the crazy shit is we got a chance to like play with them in vegas and like just us knowing where he came from obviously like yeah even yeah seeing that like turntable this with the beat junkies he could do battle stuff he could do radio which already you know you're on the radio that's not easy you got you can hear any if a one snare is off you can hear that shit yeah. on the radio um and then we saw him rocking vegas a, a club yeah and it's just like holy shit. that like, even does up, it all that opened my mind up to being like don't be so close-minded yeah. right you know what i'm saying like don't think like just because you do this you can't go do yeah. that mm-hmm. and like i remember seeing when he made that transition like damn like i never expected that like because he's a B junkie, so you don't expect him to be playing like open horn match. Just so I looked at him like, damn, that's dope. Like, yeah. Do you think, do you think that you're looked at as a hip hop DJ? Um, I think so. I think so. Just because like I was so militant with the trap shit. Because like when the LMFAO shit was jumping, like I wasn't really doing that. I was like still playing like Tiger, lap dance, and like everybody went to go do that shit yeah mm-hmm. and that was cool but that wasn't like my thing my thing was like i'm gonna just stick to rap hip-hop so when it comes back i'm gonna be on the forefront yeah 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 like a lot of cats like they follow trends me i was just like i like this shit do i'm gonna just do, stay here do you do a lot of spots now where it's more open format and you got to play edm sometimes shit? yeah like in miami i do hip-hop. and but now i'm more open to it where i like to do it like then like i was like, like i don't it. have no desire to do that like I didn't want to do that. Like I just wanted to play rap, and that's it. Like when rap comes back, I'll be right here and I'll be known yeah, as yeah. that there guy. Was a, there was a story uh, with Jay Espinosa one time where like I don't know if, if he didn't like playing EDM or he didn't like playing hip hop. Yeah. Like a club like told him to do something and he was like upset about it. Do you remember that? No, oh. I don't remember. That's how I would get. Like if something you, about if you like, tell me to play old format. I hate it unless I want to actually maybe, do it. Maybe they told him hip hop only, and he was he wanted. I don't know. It, it, I, I gotta ask him, or we'll get him on the podcast. Yeah, yeah. But. I think he. I think it's probably the hip hop only because he's always been open to like house, man. Like he no, I, I actually I had a conversation with him uh, on the phone during COVID. You know, we're all like everyone's yeah. lonely and shit, drinking. So we talk on the phone, and he like told me he he's he like considered just 
rebranding as a full-on house dj like he was like bro like nothing makes me happier than playing house music yeah. but like I'm, I'm looked at as like this hip-hop kind of guy from the radio radio too yeah. but he wanted to and maybe it's still like one of his goals man but he's He's insane at it, you know. He's, he's good at everything. He's, he's one so of my fucking favorite fun DJs, to watch, bro. like play house. He makes like house music interesting. It's yeah. not just blending it, which is usually what a lot of the house DJs do. He he like has fun with it and gets creative. Fucking, he's a he's a monster. Yeah, no, he's yeah a him and Miles DJ. Medina are like two of my favorites. So like oh, yeah. the later generation, like like to where like I'd be like, damn, I just want to retire. Like yeah, they're they're insane. so goddamn good. I'm like, yo, like. It's not even fair how good Miles, they are. Yeah, Miles got like a lot of soul and funk, like you know, dude. He's, Miles he's, is just he's, like Miles is. All right, this is another thing. Miles is also you see him as this very soulful, like kind of like feel good, yeah, type of music head, and you're like you're thinking he's gonna come in and play like just different fun shit, but then he'll just drop like uh uh thought shit <laughs> like just raw like you know like, like his trap sets play like the incredible. most random yeah. just hood record i'm just like oh okay yeah like his trap sets bro, he's down with everything he's just bro. like man i'm gonna He'll play like a city song. girl album cut and like just gets the whole the place city, going. yeah he loves the city girls <laughs> he just loves just playing random like shit and it's just like oh okay like that's not what you expected he all city girls production sounds like like bay area music too no facts yeah, like I think I, that's another thing. It's yeah. like it, he's from the Bay at the end of the day. Yeah. Like he, Bay DJs, they, they come from such with. a good culture of like DJs. Like they come from like scratch pickles and like the shortcuts, the Q birds, and they just have such a good culture. Like yeah. the Bay they, Area. And I LA. remember like every time I would watch VHS cassettes of like DMC or whatever it was, turntable TV, motherfuckers me, would be like repping Daily City. I'm like, where the hell is Daily City? <laughs> That was like the mecca of like right? scratch DJ that's, or DJs back in the days. The place, I guess. Mix I used, Master to, I used Mike. to watch that's those like, videos. Uh, the the that's like the Virginia for producers. Yeah, yeah. Right? Dude, I used to want to go there and like I used to watch Hubert eat burritos and shit. I was like, I want to go eat that bur that burrito spot he's eating at. Wow. And turntable TV, yeah, man. Dude. That was like my shit. Bro. Oh, that was like I would watch it every day. Me like, too. That and the DMC. I didn't watch that. What is that on actual TV? No, no. They no, were just it was like, VHS. Yeah, I got them at the crib, bro. I still got them at the crib. They were vlogging back in the nineties. Basically, man. bro. It's like they were just like filming everything and putting it out. They need to do a documentary on that. Bro, I, just, I, I would watch it on um. I you can still on see YouTube. them on YouTube. Yeah, yeah, you can see them on YouTube. So it'd be like them kicking a the session with like Melody. Yeah. Like them just going scratching for like 30 minutes straight, bro. Melo like, has a pretty fun story about Qbert. Yeah. We'll let him tell it. <laughs> no, I got I gotta hear that story. Yeah, it's a I was just wonder what kind of drugs they did, bro. Exactly. Well, it was exactly. on some good shit, was, bro. Like, and yeah, I was never into like psychedelics, bro. Yeah, like, they're on bro, psychedelics, man. Like the shit they were on, I'm like, they gotta be taking. But dude, some they were kind so drugs. funny too. I'm like, yo, I want to just like hang out and be like, like hang out with these dudes, just. Because they would be talking about like aliens being abducted and like all kinds of yeah. crazy shit. I'm like, oh yeah, right. yeah, they're, they're into that shit. I tell I tell Melo all the time. I was like, man, like. You were a celebrity. To yeah. Me. Like I would he only hear you on the radio or watch you on V on, on my TV. That considers you a movie star. Yeah. You were my movie star. Yo, I, I tell people this all the time. Like, you know, I, Mello, nah, nah. Yo, I've He's been so around. Like, He's so humble. Like we've been around like in this radio show, we've been, we've been blessed to be around like the biggest artists. And like, I, I can only speak for myself, but I'll get geeked out more being around like a melody, a evidence. For sure. Than I'll be being around this Diddy big rapper someone. yeah like i'll be like this is like my hero these yeah. are like childhood like when i what? see them premiere like i still like oh my bro God, like, like what premiere. uh during the body like the am era at body english i was just stumbling there drunk and then i'll be like you know i'll just push in the booth whatever and we have his peoples in there i'll be like and i'll turn around and be like evidence fucking uh alchemist rocker i'm like oh my god they were boys right yeah damn and Nicole Richie was in there. <laughs> I was like, holy wow. shit. Yeah, that and we're like, oh, evidence. Leonardo's here. Oh, wait, with evidence is you. Like, Bro, I Even to like, this day, yeah. I still, like, Alchemist is a good friend of mine, but, like, I still, like, look at him as my yeah. ghost. So I still have, like, that little piece of that child. Yeah, like, yeah. you're the goat to me. Yeah. All right, give me your top three producers. Alchemist. Uh, That's number one or no order? Number one for number me. Number one. Yeah, one, just because he's always been my favorite. 
He aged so beast. well. Yeah, he aged so well. Like to this day. Oh, he's more relevant, yeah. relevant than ever. Exactly. Relevant. <laughs> relevant. relevant. So him. We got the uh, Larry, uh, Larry June yeah. stuff. Yeah. Uh, Action Bronze and stuff. Yep. Yeah. Doctor Dre still just because I was always yeah. a Dre fan. All right. So Alchemist Dre. And Primo. Primo. Yeah. yeah. Five. Primo. Pete Rock. Damn, P. Rock Damn, is one my of my third is too, bro. Kind of, yeah. Primo. P. P. Rock is one of my favorites too. P. Rock is, is insane, bro. And probably, yeah, Alchemist is up there with me too. Like, Just fuck. they age so well, bro. Like, Who else? Like, I need to. I got, I got Pharrell. That's a good one. Timbaland. Yeah. That's and a and good don't get one. me wrong, I, I, I fuck with like the Alchemist yeah. and Dillas. My third is Q Tip. Yeah, he doesn't get the very yeah, underrated. Yeah. He doesn't get the respect uh, as a producer. Not for sure. Like the mob D shit, like the shit done the mob D shit early on. Like yeah, I, I would say like he'd be more in my top ten. But yeah, even like the tribe shit too, bro. Bro, what? Just remember listening to tribe. It was so different as a kid. Like this shit was so jazzy, it's so different. And like I just remember like nothing sounded like that at that time. Like yeah. So I agree with you on that. I'll yeah. put them in my top, uh, I mean, top like, There's 10. like, you can go on forever. Like, JD, fucking. I mean, yeah. I didn't yeah. get into Dilla until more oh later my on. Oh, God, dude. Until later on. But, like, I was just recently having, like, this way with just to listen to all Dilla. Like, Dilla, 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 yeah. Sloan Village. Anything Dilla, Dilla was also, produce. like, he was more universal people think remember do you remember the frank and dank record yeah, yeah. that it was remember like it's like a jiggy sounding yeah. record and we were playing on power mad lib what the uh, fuck bam, 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 yeah. dun, dun. i forgot what it was called yeah i remember that record but yeah uh Damn. he was he was super he, he had a, a even wide like the, variety even of the sounds. far side shit like the running oh, and all yeah. that oh shit bro God. like i think who, that's the one that was like Jay really uh, east swift right who, who's the producer uh i mean he did the uh, he still did the but, alcoholic shit. Oh yeah, fuck! I love the alcoholics too. Dude, the licks. Fuck, damn. They they represent the valley, so I always had like a yeah. soft spot with the, the licks. alcoholics are from the valley. Yeah, I no used way. to yeah. he used well, hang out with Tash all the time. The group. I used to love Tash. Even so when look, he my grandma, solo, my grandma voice. used to live in Osborne, Arlita. So like, one of them lived across the street. So like, that's how like I got familiar with the licks and like, light pole would have like all the liquid like stickers and. Yeah, like they were a big part of the valley, like A one H shit. Really? That's was dope. Exhibit from the Valley? I don't know. He was down with the licks like Yeah, yeah, yeah he was yeah, down with yeah, the yeah, liquid for that. through King T. Yeah. Through mm. King Tech. It all started with King T. Yeah. Oh damn, King T was dope too. Wow. And remember King, King T. T was signed to Aftermath too at yeah. one point too. Really? Oh, shit, yeah. Really? Like that whole era was crazy. Like just think about it. Rakim was even signed to Aftermath yeah. at one point. And like we never got to hear none of that shit. Just yeah. imagine Dr. Dre and Rock Kim. I still wonder what that would have been. Well, I wonder why that shit never came out. I don't know, yeah. Well, all, uh, we also waited probably 20 years for a oh, Dre for album. Detox? Yeah, for Detox. <laughs> it still never That's came out. That's probably why it never came out. Yeah. Dre was probably not out. satisfied. He's so like perfectionist. Yeah, I heard it's crazy. That. So I met Dre and uh, it was with Johnny Barba and you know they they had a show on apple called the pharmacy and oh, he yeah, went, i remember that and johnny tried to get me to go in there and mix and i was like oh, i'm not the right fit like i knew i wasn't the right fit and i go in there and exhibit battle cat all these guys are there dre's not there and it was in the studio in the valley and i'm just i was like i don't know and they're they they're on like episode 300 or something crazy and they're like yeah we don't like repeating songs but then we don't like every song so i'm like okay so give me an example like what song it was they didn't know it was such a oh we played that already oh we played that already oh we played that already so it was really tough and i was like all right i have the talent to do a mix for them like i know i can like do like just put it to, mix together but right. like just their what they wanted i i couldn't nail it so me and johnny went uh outside and and not outside but outside of the the studio room to the to the kitchen and make some coffee and shit and then like the room just switched and like some guy boss here boss here and like everyone like <laughs> fucking buttoned up their oh, shirt type shit. shit and sure enough dre walks in johnny you know he loves johnny Farpa and, and 
comes and meets me. He's like, oh, man, you're going to put it down on the ones and twos? Very old school, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, lingo, like, right? Lingo, like, Very old school. The like, wheels are steel. I was like, yeah, I'm going to try. <laughs> and I remember it was being a Laker game. We're watching Kobe play, and we're sitting there. And it was just me, Dre, and Johnny. And he's telling Johnny a story. I just oh, I just came back from this movie. He said, hey, man, Johnny, there's this girl, man. You would have liked her, Johnny. And he's, like, looking at me in the yeah. eye. He's, he's very, like, personable. Yeah. So when he's talking to you, he's looking at you. It was like, man, this is That's fucking dope. Dre. I didn't, obviously, didn't get a picture because you got to belong in the room. Right, right. But it was, it's a moment I'll never forget. It's a legend, bro. I would ask yeah, for a picture. Dr. Sure. Dre. No, I couldn't. <laughs> I can't just be like, Not I'm just sure me, he would have done it, but... <laughs> You just don't want to ask at that you moment. Not, like, you're yeah, in his yeah. house, you know what I mean? Right, right. Yeah, now for sure. Well, so what happened with the mix, though? No, I never did it. Oh, shit. I, I, I just, we weren't, I was trying to go through music. Yeah. And it wasn't working. Because I want to say, like. Yeah. Too meticulous. It was, it was, you know it's what like it is? It's like unrealistic type of shit, right? Because they all stressed out because they knew Dre was the picky one. So they're being extra, like. Picky anal about it so it was just not it was like man so i think battle cat just put put them all together yeah but anyway my point they would put that radio show together every episode it was weekly he would treat it like an album mix he'd sit there and mix it and i would see him on the board and i just like mixing it one by one and and like crazy like this is a fucking radio show. It's a regular mix. It's a radio show. I remember that. Jay Creddy did one or two, right? Also, He did a few and they just weren't, they, they, bro, they're not happy. They're, they don't like anything. So, I, and I'm sure that was stressing him out. He was probably like, bro, like, I don't want to do this anymore. I think Battle Cat was a good fit for him. Anyways. It's perfect. Cause you, yeah. cause A, he's part of the, the gang. So right. you can't, he knows them. He knows them and you, you just kind of go. You, you they're gonna let him slide with shit that yeah. they wouldn't let exactly. you or somebody exactly. else slide exactly just off of who he is shout out ian fletcher in here mr oh, i don't need on mondays ian or wednesdays fletcher. we're part of a health chat now no it's funny so off the before we started the podcast because dre dre works out lost 20 pounds since covid whatever and then uh so i was like oh do you fast he was like fuck no <laughs> He goes, man, I work out so I could eat burgers. Burgers and drink Coca-Cola, <laughs> And drink Coca-Cola. You don't eat healthy at all. No. Do you eat salads? Yeah, I eat salads. Okay. But I go through a little run through them, like, throughout the with week. With ranch and croutons? Yeah, or, like, oh, yeah, yeah, Caesar yeah. salad. Wrong with ranch and croutons. Or, like, Caesar salad, like, tender green oh, type yeah, yeah, shit. Yeah. Like, I just had tender greens. Yeah, tender today. green is, like, my favorite. Like, yeah. I'm going to have to eat, like, healthy salads. I'm not just fucking give me a tender little, green. Sorry. Let me get the little romaine hearts, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Tender <laughs> greens is... <laughs> All right with me, dog. Yeah, bro. But Have I'm not ever, gonna be super like balsamic vinegar. And, nah, like, I'm not, a, nobody not, likes balsamic. That's <laughs> not me, bro. That's not what I'm. I doing. eat it. Sometimes. If you go to Italy though, they have the aged balsamic, and they actually you can put on ice cream and eat it. Yo, what was you the really things in uh, Japan that we was talking about the the jewelry? The five. Oh, jewelry. the goro, oh, go, goro, goro. Yes, you oh, gotta, was, you gotta put me up on Delta game. One. Oh yeah, and so it was just a resale. I told them the story. I remember like, with so yeah, these are yeah. resale. I was like, look at this little thing. How much is? It? And it was like nine grand, right? Yeah, yeah I'm like, this is like two thousand or something like that. If that, he's like, yeah, yeah. So be. you gotta be careful with those. Or like now that like a lot of fake ones, like not fake. They're like, yeah, yeah, made. You know, they're replicas, I guess. But like, you can't like, you can't even tell anymore. So, but yeah, you have to go. And the the actual shop is open like once a week. So the actual guy that makes them past yeah so the family runs it right right but they don't make them anymore right they make them so the family still but it's not it. the same obviously no, but um guys. yeah yeah so but they open once a week and kids line up and then you have to own a piece already before you can go in and purchase it's nuts bro and like you can get one thing because they, they're Wu. aware of like resellers that's Dr. why Wu has a crazy collection oh yeah. yeah he's got like the fam like friends and family gold yeah, ones he's he's in yeah my boy what's the most expensive one you own I mean, the one, so I bought mine from uh, my boy, uh, Victor at Union, and I, I got it for two racks. And it, I was like, he basically just gave it to me, gave, you know, the same price he got it for. What's it worth? Uh, well, I added a few other pieces to it, but it's probably like, I was with Blaze in uh, Boston, shout out to Blaze from Hawaii, and he knows the prices. He has a crazy piece. And I have a, a gold piece, like a, has a little bit of gold on it. He's like, oh, your thing is 20 grand. 
<laughs> yeah. I have two. I have two sets though. I have like a, a kind of like not a decoy set, but it's just like a basic one with like one feather and like another little low one. Yeah. So like if someone like jacks me, I like I won't be too sad. It won't be too sad. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, that one you'd like, have to really know what you like. Yeah. yeah. So that, like the chain mm-hmm. alone, right? You can get it when you buy it at the actual shop. It's like a couple hundred bucks, and then the little wheel feather thing. It's like a couple hundred, and then every little thing costs money. It adds up, and then. When you buy it, you walk out the door, it quadruples, maybe times five, ten. It's like one feather is probably like a couple hundred bucks, and they'll resell for like two grand. The good thing is no one, no one knows, you know, they're li- people, people, people in these L.A. streets are trying to jack Rolexes. Oh, no, no. I had a homie that got, got, got jacked. Really? Yeah. But, I mean, that's, you know. I don't even I think own a watch. Like I got an MLS. Like I mean, yeah. yeah, I don't wear yeah, a watch. I wear an Apple watch. I got one jewelry. ring and it's an aura ring and it detects my sleep. Yeah, yep. I'm not a jewelry yeah. guy like that, it's, man. It's my, my sleep uh, ring. It's amazing. You see Ian Fletcher's question right there? What did Ian say? I want to hear how you got started stories. Well, you're a little late. Yeah, uh, we've, uh, you might, might have to run back uh, the he started, episode. He started selling, selling mixed tapes to buy record players and turntables and he wanted to be a drummer the funny thing my first party that i ever went to was richard hunt division and tony v on four turntables wow in, I in lancaster like oh wow which is like crazy in itself like i just remember like that was like my first experience i'm like damn i was in awe like this is a good first party like Hump Division and Tony B on four turntables. How many people were at the party? It was party. Popping. It was like a thousand people. Wow. So it was, it was at the party. fairgrounds, yeah. So this was, so this is a good thing to ask. When you saw Richard and Tony B, were you still on your backpack shit or were you already no, this like, is, no, I wasn't even on my backpack shit yet. This was like early, this was like 94, 95, maybe like at that early, time. Yeah, like, like power tools. Yeah, yeah. like break beats. The guy in Palmda had just won the power tools contest so he was like our god like, yeah yeah who was what's his name aladdin he beat la yeah, i remember L- aladdin he, he beat la rock so it was like they were battling so like to us like that was like our pride like like dude, og remember, like aladdin og aladdin no no not not oh, that oh, oh, not, oh. who want to battle me for 10 g yeah, 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 no, yeah no, not no, him. No. okay this is like a, a power i know tools. La, la, la rock's a scratch dj yeah yeah from so, uh, air force dude, uh, so, the air force crew yeah so i remember, la rock. I remember this battle or contest because Larock was like he's supposed to be the guy he was a guy every flyer had Larock on it where i was like damn i want to be like this dude everyone and aladdin was from our area so he beat him so he was like where did our, Larock grow up like sgb maybe Larock probably i think like wherever world records was at, i think that was like his yeah, area yeah, yeah. like world. Alhambra. Is that Alhambra? Yeah, I think so. I want to say like Alhambra. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That area. yeah, yeah. Those dudes were dope, man. Yeah, that was my first experience. And like he was, the, that dude was like the motivation for me to be like, all right, you could be from here and still take it to LA, the Valley. Especially yeah. coming from there. Is That's like what I'm not, saying. There's, there's only not. Curious and Aladdin at the time. Curious was like a big drum and bass DJ. He was doing like all the, all the big raves like EDC, I went to like EDC in like 96, like all the early shit. So like I was already rolling with him seeing like this shit is possible. Like I see it firsthand, like this guy lives here in my area. He's willing to let me come with him, smoke weed, hold the records, just be down. Mm. And like that's what inspired me to be like, all right, yeah, I could be from Palmdale and go travel the world and do this shit for a living. And like those guys just showed me. Did you get possible. to meet? Did you get to know Aladdin too or no? A little bit, like I would call his crib, like yo. I was like fourteen. They were older, so I, and like Gusto and Aladdin were in the same crew. It was called Family Tree. They all played breakbeats and like Frisco bass. Yeah. So like they was like into that. So like I was just trying to be down. Like I would call like yo man, I'm trying to come pull up, trying to come hang out. Like I didn't even have a whip. I didn't have a way to get there. I'd be like yeah, come through. I would never go. I'd be too shy. But I would call him and just check in, like, yo, what's yeah. up, man? What y'all doing? Like the kid I'm in the mid 90s. Yeah, I'm like, I'm just trying to be yeah. down. Like, Are you I still wanna, DJing? Who? Aladdin? I, 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 don't know you know. He, I don't know where he's at. I always wonder, like, there's there's a couple DJs that, like, were doing their thing when I was just starting, and I always 
wonder like, damn, like, I wonder if they're give still me, doing give it. Give me two DJs. Well, <sighs> maybe they're like, not everybody else would be like. Yeah, so there was like this local dude named DJ Chicago. That was just his name. Had no, probably no ties to Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> never but, even been to Chicago. Probably never crazy. even been to Chicago. But he he uh, was doing all the house parties, like playing house music, right? And then Remark, which I am friends with, yeah, no, but I, I didn't get Remark to become is. friends with Remark till later. I actually got really close during the Twitch days, but Remark was like the guy battling, like doing juggles at lunch at Carson High School. So I'd watch Remark like, oh my God, bro. So there was that. And I was very open. I was exposed to so much music early on and I'm very thankful for it. So I was already a big Morrissey, Smith's Cure, Depeche Mode. I was a big fan of that, like middle school. So during high school, there was this DJ called ATM. Bro, he was the coolest motherfucker in my, in my eyes, bro. <laughs> this guy, this guy ATM, I think it was like Addicted to Music was his nice. the acronym. And he was an 80s DJ. He had like a mix with uh, Back to the Future cover. It was called Back to the Future. And it all just 80s flashbacks, bro. That's what we called it. We don't call yeah. it that yeah, way. Yeah. We flashbacks. called it flashbacks. And it was, and he had a black 65 Mustang with a white top. Bro, I literally wanted to be this yeah. guy. <laughs> he was a cool, he had the hottest girlfriend. Like he was just a guy. Like, bro. Imagine having a must a fly ass Mustang in high school. Fucking high school, yeah. In high school with a hot chick and you're a DJ playing eighties and you're and you're just like popping. Yeah. He was a guy. Never got to know him. So um yeah, those are like the top three that that as far as like not me listening to Melo or whatever, like um, my local celebrities were those guys. Yeah, I feel you. Did you ever uh hear the wonder? Yeah, yeah that, like that crazy flashback mix. Hell yeah, that mix course. was so legendary. I did that one. I think it's still we on booked Mixed him Cloud. just so he could do that mix live. Like I remember booking him. Like yo, we gotta hire this guy. I wanted to see him come do this Wait, shit live. His name was the Wanderer. The Wonder, mm -hmm. oh, bro. Wow. His mix is so dope. I think it's on Mixcloud. If I'm not mistaken. Yeah, bro. bro. You can find yeah. it like on all kinds of shit. But like it was like a staple CD. Yeah. Like in LA, like that CD was like the staple. Yeah. I would the go Wonder. buy mix CDs from and vinyl from like uh, Santa Fe Springs. Santa Fe Springs, Swatton. it was downtown. Bro, always. A lot of shit on Melrose too, like if you want like the house mixes and shit like that, like Doc Martin. Yeah. I will, I will say this, as far as 80s mixes go, uh, Vi Vice's most legendary mix, Breakfast Clubbing. Yeah. I engineered it. No way. Uh, I, I, ran I never heard shit. I gotta hear I it. I sat there every day with them for like two, three weeks straight. I was there every day at his house and I'm running the Pro Tools. Dope. And I was like really good at engineering at the time. Yeah. And I was just like running, I ran the whole the whole mix. I had no idea. Yeah. Cause it's vinyl. Yeah, yep. This was all on vinyl. One that, thing that too, makes it so clean, man. Just going back, thinking so about good. it, like Gusto, now that I think about it, was like a real big part too. Like and just like inspired me too. Cause at one point he lived in Palmdale too. So it's like that's yeah. how me and Gusto even got cool. Me and his cousin were best friends. Yeah. So like just gusto Vic. being around too. Yeah. So it's like me and Vic were like like tight, tight, but just Gusto moved with Vic. So like Gusto already had his swag. So like we looked up to Gusto because he's like a year or two older from us. Yeah. And like now that I think about it, just like me meeting the guys from T Weapons, just me being influenced by Gusto. And Gus got on power early as early. Philly Fell's intern. Yeah, early. They used to call him Uncle Gus. Yeah, Uncle, Uncle Gus, Gus, bro. Yeah. Dude, I remember Gus. So, Gus? Yo, it, Gus so wouldn't even drink. It, it was, I don't think it was, no, it, it was already after he lost the weight, I think. Nice. He had kind of just lost a little bit of the weight. He yeah. was like coming down from like losing some yeah, of the yeah. weight. He but, was uh, wearing glasses back yeah, then. Yeah, exactly. He had a Lexus IS and he had just moved from Palmdale to the Valley. And then he went to Grant and then like he started doing all the power shit. But like me and Vic was just like, we would tag along whenever we could because he's starting to get gigs and yeah, yeah. he's becoming the guy. So it was like, yo, we trying to hang out with you, Gus. Like, let us hang out, man. Yeah. And he would let us come and hang around. So like, yeah. now that I think about it, Gus definitely played like a big part, just inspired me and just being like, yo, you can come out of here and go make it anywhere else. That's tight. And what, what were your top three local shit? 
Because when did you leave Cerritos? Uh, around ninth grade. But so, I knew like... So your local guys are Vegas guys, I'm, I'm assuming. Well, early local guy that got me like interested in like DJing is uh, this guy, DJ Havoc, which is like he was one of the r- original beat junkies. Because wow. I was best friends with his brother, Greg. It's and funny, there was a, a party crew called Havoc. Havoc. And oh, they were yeah. the biggest like promoters. Anyway, no, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah, he no he, connection. But yeah, I would just like go hang out the, at their house after school, and I would just hear like the music blasting. It was just scratching. I'm like, oh my god! I was like, I want to <laughs> do this. And then I remember our sixth grade dance. He was a DJ, and I was just like so fucking intrigued. I was just, like just watching him the whole time. Like wasn't even paying attention to anything. I was just watching. I was like, this is so cool, man. And then like um, in junior high, high school. There was a guy named E Rock. Wow. E Rock. E Rock. Eric. <laughs> not not uh our E Rock. Eric. But uh yeah, there was a guy named E Rock. He was a he was a senior. I was like in eighth grade and he was like the DJ. Uh, uh I looked uh, up to him. Pauline was like uh I told her about Stone. She's like, Who's Stone Rock? And why does everyone have to be a rock? <laughs> like E Rock, A Rock, that's a, Stone Rock. Yeah, that's a very uh, uh, it's just a very like nineties hip hop thing. Yeah, it's nineties hip hop thing. Well, La it's like one of the, it's one of those things where like it's an era too. Like there used to be like eras like where it was rock, yeah, one, one or boy at yeah, the one, end, yep. boy like Ralphie boy, Ski? Angel boy, Eddie or, boy, yeah. So yeah, like boy. there was like, was like the, there was like their little Ski? Ski? yeah. There was Mark like the Ski, eras Ski, of like Joe it's kind of like rap, like the little yeah. styles. Little, what is it? D Styles, yeah, yeah Styles, yeah. Yeah. J Styles, yeah, yeah, yeah. something fresh. You know, Swift. how did like, you get your name? Was it always Dre Sinatra? No, nah, it used to be Dre One, Andre One when yeah. I started, and then uh, when I started making beats, I heard this Frank Sinatra sample, and I like was like, damn, this is like the dopest shit. It's like, I want to be, I want to combine both names, Dre Sinatra, Dre with Sinatra, so Dre, I just thought like it was more marketable. Yeah, yeah. It was so like it was Andre one, one was like, I just didn't feel like it was like a tagger. Yeah. So yep. I was like, I just like, yeah, this is it. I want to be like more marketable. Yeah. So I just put the two names together. That's how I came about it. Nice. nice. And why'd you start producing? I just always did it like for the love. I like the sample. And I feel like um, like my harshest critic. Like, you know, it's like you got to let somebody hear it. They don't like it. It's like, damn, like, yeah. I just don't like that feeling. So I just like to just sample, do it for myself. And that that's shit it. was like a bum out feeling, bro. Like I, I used to produce a lot and like. You think you got something down hot down. and then like they listen to like. Everything yeah. I made was hot. <laughs> and like in my head, you know what yeah. I mean? Like everything yeah. I made was hot. And I would play it for people and like see their reaction i'm like fuck <laughs> this shit sucks yeah bro <laughs> and yeah it was and then i you know then i go back and re-listen after you you're off the high of making it and i'm like damn this does fucking suck you know so yeah i i yeah everything because the thing is like how do you tell someone their baby's ugly you know what i mean like <laughs> they're looking at me like all right but i know they don't like yeah, it yeah but yeah, to you you could have an ugly baby but to you it's the cutest baby yeah. you know what i mean like it's just that's just how it is and it's nothing wrong with it. It's just a different connection feeling you have, you know. So, yeah, that that's how making it's like the comes. rejection. Like you don't like the rejection. Like I really just listen to it myself. I know I like it. I don't gotta let yeah. nobody else hear this shit. I'm gonna put my headphones on and enjoy it. And like, what kind of shit were you making? Like samples? like samples, like just sampling shit. Just like like would, sampling straight up or chopping like primo? both both. both. Damn. Me and Vic, me and Solo is uh, Gus's cousin. We oh, just, yeah. I we just re- he's I the one who really taught me how to use reason. So me and him would just smoke his dad's weed, go in the garage, make beats, and just just try to figure it out, man. Do it for the love. Like, just just genuinely love this shit. Like, you and nobody hears it, who cares? Like, we're just, like, doing this shit. I mean, that's why we all started, right? right? Yeah, that's what I'm like, saying. It's never, it was never about the money. Like, yeah. one thing about this we shit, didn't plan this it's thing. always been about love. Shout like, out Flicked. You see the jersey Flicked? You see it? Oh, shit. Body. <laughs> Body. There he is. Now, I was, I was wearing my LFC hat, too. Were you? Yeah, and then I walked out. I was like, ah, I'm doing too, too much color right now. We got to go white. hit a game, man. Especially <laughs> now that Messi's at. What colors is that? No. Nah, is that blue? Nah, I had, and I had a white one on. Oh, is that a navy blue hat? Or uh, black? I don't even know, man. I don't know. Oh, it's navy blue, I guess. Oh, it's hot. Oh, it's hot. Hot. 
Oh uh, shit. It's funny because usually we, we have like a structure of like someone's story, but we went in we're a good way. Like, we're we just talking but, today, man. But currently um DJing, obviously all the clubs out here almost, yeah. right? You do the Monday, the bowling stuff. Yeah, we started a bowling night just because we really like bowling and uh that shit. should probably look popping, huh? Well, it's with Marley in them? Yeah. Oh yeah. shit. Is that Lucky Strike? It's yeah, Lucky it's Strike. Like basically, we was bowling at one point. Like Wiz, Mustard, YG, everybody was really into bowling. I remember and we this got era. into it. I remember that era. And like, I always wanted to start a bowling night. And I told one of my, a couple of my dogs, like, hey, we should do this bowling night. And the shit just worked out to where like we started doing the bowling night. Everybody yeah, started coming in. Like this shit ain't cheap either. Like we charge a lot to ball on that night, but why not? It's by design, so it's like. Either you got it and you can come ball. And it's like exclusive, or you can't. Like, yeah, no, of course, because if everyone has a lane, there's no lanes. Yeah. After not only that, you just don't want the riffraff. It's like yeah, I got yeah. friends that come be like, "Hey, bro, I can't do nothing for you." There's a lot of riffraff with money, though, bro. You'd be surprised. There is, but you still want to separate. Somebody's gonna be like, let's just say somebody hangs out with me every day. It's like, all right, bro. Even though you hang out, you still gotta pay a hundred to come in. Either you want to pay or not. You don't. Damn, it's not that's the, the cover. Yeah, it's not I mean, the party yeah. for you. Oh, cover is a hundred. Not even for a lane. No, the lane is like a thousand. Oh lane. shit! And you still gotta Wait, get a so bottle. Just to come into the lucky just strike, to get hundred bucks. Just, if you don't got a lane, it's a hundred bucks. Holy right? shit! And it, so it's like that's what I'm trying to say. We're trying no, to. No, like, I like this. We're trying to like, do, like just separate like. All and right, a lane is like getting a table at a club. A, yeah, it's a thousand for the lane, and that's not even including a bottle. So you oh, gotta pay the thousand. And your that's bottles. for ten people. And you still got to get a bottle, so at least can hit you fifteen hundred. This is you. Who else? This is Breeze, myself, Jermaine, uh, my boy Joey, and a couple other promoters. But yeah, like we okay, started this yeah. party with just like it being like let's just do something exclusive to where like the athletes. It's called like Kingpin. Yeah, Kingpin Monday. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. we just want to do something to be exclusive for like athletes. That's every Monday. Rappers, yeah, every month. Every Monday, Monday I mean, like, damn, that's why you can't come, bishy. <laughs> yeah, like I'm telling you, like I got, friend, I got, I got you, my friends that hit me, like close friends, and be like, hey, bro, like I can't do nothing for you, so, yeah. hundred bucks. Meet me at Highlight Room t tomorrow. <laughs> Even, bro, I really don't like to roll people like that. It's just like, yo, it's business. If there's a guesses, yeah. no, you know it's Hollywood. There ain't no guesses. Yeah. Like I just, I don't know. Were I've you, always been like that. What about the females? Did, did you get a taste of like that early Hollywood? See, yeah, I got White like, Lotus, all that shit. Yeah, I was already, bro, when I was 16, I was already promoting. I would drive from Palmdale, go promote, like, and I'll go back to school. So, like, before Club Element, it was called Club Blue. Before White Lotus, it was called Crush Bar. It was like a dump. Damn, I don't even remember any yeah, of Yeah, exactly. So, like, they, they tore Crush Bar down and they, they built White Lotus. So, wow. like, lingerie, lingerie Lotus, became... used to. Ritual or ritual? Oh, not ritual. Oh. I think it started with a C, no? Colony. Colony. Oh, wow. So, yeah, yeah I was yeah. doing Colony. But, um, yeah, when I was young, bro, I was already coming to, like, a lot of these clubs. So, like, Area used to be what Nightingale was yeah, at. That, and they used to be called Prey. Yep. I used to DJ there. Bro, I used to go there on uh, DJ there Thursday. Same thing. I had that vice, vice circle. I would DJ there. You're in a little room. It's all red. And... On Thursday, every Thursday, Hugh Hefner would come, but he would come just for one hour. So he'd be there from like 10 to 11 and then dip before everyone shows up. He's out. But he comes in with like nine girls, Takes hangs always. out, has a couple bevs and he leaves. <laughs> and one time Snoop was with them. And I think Snoop went to left Damn. legend. Yeah. So like all that shit, shit, I was shit. able to like just catch a glimpse being young, getting snuck into the club. Yeah. Even, uh, was it Dublin's Miyagi's? Yeah. Um, shit. Yeah, Miyagi. Miyagi's. Damn. That's, is that Pink Taco? Yeah. So, like, all that, just like I was able to get to see all that at a young age, sneak in, be inspired by it, get motivated to want to do it at some point. And shit. I was able to be around. Thank God. I was promoting at the time. Yeah. I was outside, passing out flyers. Damn. <laughs> I was going to say, how you know all these spots? Because you're like, you know, I was younger promoting. than us. Yeah. How old like are you now? Forty one. Oh, we're yeah. all the same age. Yeah, forty one. Well, so like at that time, older, I was older. I was. You eighty one. Eighty one. Yeah, we're same age. Eighty one, oh, baby. God damn. 
41 damn, baby. God damn. But yeah, Dublin's was dope. Like all those spots, Key Club, what else? Like Warwick was lingerie at that time. Damn. There was so many spots, bro. Lingerie, was, man. <laughs> yeah, bro. Like the club names back in the days. Yeah. I know. Club names nowadays, too. I mean, they, they recycle back, too, you know? So wild. Station. Uh, where, I'm trying to think what station was called before. Where was station at? Station is where they, next to the Roscoe, not Roscoe's. Um, We're next to Roscoe. <laughs> next yeah. to Popeyes. Popeyes on. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Where Coinga's at. Yeah, yeah. I walked by there last night. It was scary. <laughs> where they used to do snatch at. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Fuck. Uh, little Nick used to DJ there, too. It was like S- a Monday party. S Bar? No. No, no, I know what you're talking about. It's like in the cor- in the in the alleyway. No, it's uh, right next to Popeyes on Hollywood and Coin. Yeah, there. yeah, I just walked by there. He- Hemingway? No. Let's see if anybody knows what it's called. Hollywood and Coin. No, I remember Hemingway though too. It's still there. H Wood, damn H Wood. I remember the early H Wood days. Oh yeah, that was Hollywood. That was Highland, Highland right? Yeah. yeah you Hollywood know the funny thing is, a lot of people don't even think they know that you did the first penthouse. Me? Yeah. The first penthouse? Yeah. Did I? Yeah. You did like the first the penthouse, penthouse. is like penthouse now? The one that's over there and uh well they moved it now, but you did the first penthouse. It was used to be called Apple. Next to the Christian Louboutin store. I mean you would Wait. know. Penthouse. It used to be called what? Apple? Apple but it was it was called Penthouse, but you did the very first penthouse. Really? What the fuck? Because I remember they were like, yo. I don't have a They were like, memory we want, we're going to book so. Deluxe because, you know, we want Penthouse to be, like, you know, a little bit different. So, like, I remember, like, yeah, the Deluxe was the first guy to get booked for Penthouse. No shit. And now they're on the ninth season. So, that was nine years ago. Oh, now they shit. want nothing to do with me. Not only do they want nothing to do with me, I will. No, nah, I just don't think they could. I just don't think they could afford you, to be honest with you. Like, you know, it's the Hollywood like, bro, shit, man. I, no, no, I, I told this story on the podcast before how, how uh, we were walking around in Japan uh, a month ago and it was me, um, Dre and Dre, the law firm. No, uh, Sinatra, no, Sinatra, 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 Sorry, <laughs> DJ Sinatra, Sinatra from New York, but now lives in Tokyo and Dre Sinatra were all there. And you guys, you got, I was kind of, me and my girl were in front of you kind of, and you guys were behind us and talking music bro nine out of the 10 songs you guys named and like sang i didn't know <laughs> that's how like out of the loop i am that's how 41 i am i was like bro you guys were singing shit and i was like what in the world what song is this I, but I, think, I think that's kind of like that's kind of like if you guys have a conversation like just like the song you were telling me about earlier right oh, i didn't know that one either well, it's like just, you know, y'all have like it's knowledge in other shows. Yeah. Y'all play music, different clubs. Yeah, that was like, so more like, like di- a TikTok thing. But dude, I was, but yeah, there's a whole. No, it's a, the thing is like every, like if you, I'm used to playing a certain scene. Right, right. Which is mainly Vegas now. This yeah. is, you know. Big money. And it's big room shit. Like big money, y'all. He's talking big money. <laughs> it's not big don't money, it's big Don't let him fool. He's talking big money, man. But I talked, to, I talked about this before. I thought, I think I talked to Melody about this, that where we we're just i'm so brainwashed in that big room mentality where if something doesn't have energy yeah i just feel like i can't play it right, like i'm right. not allowed to play yeah. it like you get yelled at like more energy more energy yeah, yeah, yeah. and you and they need a confetti blast yeah so like i automatically go to music with more energy even if it's hip-hop but like something with more energy right, kind of right. like is my what my ear as yeah. far as Going well, like you know to what's DJ gonna work, work for you, kind of like yeah, basically. Yeah. And pick it up, brothers. DJ ever said, so, yeah. yeah. Bro, <laughs> you know how many pick it up, brothers? Bro, <laughs> more, yo, it's like more energy, brother. Dog, I have a story. I won't say the club, I won't say the person, but I, I boom boom pow was the biggest song, <laughs> the biggest, biggest song. You remember how big that song yeah, was, boom, bro? Boom boom. Ah. And then there's a fat man scoop version of it, yeah, which, which is, is high energy. I was I went to C five at a club. Bro, he's playing boom boom pow and someone comes up to him and says, More energy. <laughs> and this is before b- the EDM this is like Yeah, this is like this is at the right before the EDM. So it was you can't go to 
There's nowhere to go. There's nowhere to go. There's that's no like the big pinnacle, room. Right? I have to go back down or just keep it up. Like I, you know, I was mind blown. Yeah, where he, <laughs> when he said more, I pick it up like more energy <laughs> to boom boom pow fat man scoop. Like where do you where do you want me to go from here, I, bro? Do you remember that? Yeah, anymore? of course, <laughs> bro. But that's why, like, I think like house dance music EDM was a savior for like you know those big rooms because. It was just like not a at first for me it was a filler because like it would get 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 the energy up before we bring it back down to do our hip hop shit and you know whatever top forty and then pick, oh and they was like oh pick it up easy we'll go back to fucking EDM. I was talking to a fuck I forgot who it was. It was a hip hop DJ like a hip hop DJ. I don't remember who it was, but kind of got a taste of Vegas and he told me how might have been Chase B actually. Yeah, was it? It might have been Chase how much he loves playing like EDM shit in Vegas. Cause there's no other, you won't get a reaction the way you do to yeah. EDM in Vegas. Meaning like you're seeing the hand, just the energy is yeah. a different. That's how I feel about it in Miami. Like even a little bit in Vegas, but more in Miami, like yeah. there's shit I'll play in Miami that you'll never see me play in LA. Yeah. But it's like the energy will make me be like, it's like, like the adrenaline like as far rush. As house music stuff. Like or house just music, open format, like, like well, this is say I live. Well, you know, the thing is, is uh, even with live, since the EDM boom in like oh, like 2010, yeah. let's call it 10, 11, 2010, 11, they remodeled and built clubs for that yeah. music. Right, like those are built for that. So Facts. live is a built for. So I know, hundred you know? percent. For Vegas, it was Marquee. Marquee yeah. was the first they one. Built I it remember. For, uh, yeah, I was I, I was still on turntables. And I was doing every Saturday in the boombox room, which was hip, the best party, yeah. bro, hip hop. Every athlete was in there. Uh, Russell Westbrook we, still follows me on Twitter. I met him. He was on the dance floor with his brother. And Nick's like, that looks like Westbrook. And I called him over and like, and we became cool at, for a little period of time. He doesn't remember me anymore, but DeAndre Jordan. Anyway, and then Mondays, two, Mond two Mondays a month, I'm in the main room. Right. The sound guy one day told me, like, you know, we have to rent turntables every for you every time. <laughs> we don't own turntables in here. And I was just like, oh, shit, my bad. It was built for house. And that room was. And then it got yeah. to a point where I was like, yo, don't bring me turntables anymore. Because the room was so built for house with subs the under you. All that. Yep. So loud. But then there's confetti. There's everything would fall and like fuck my needle up. There's no there's no phase. Like, yeah, I would have to blow it. So I. Pause. Hey, hey, yo. Right. Yo, that's a hot clip. Hot take. Yo, clip that right take there. The <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, you had we, to blow it. We <laughs> <laughs> had to blow the confetti off the vinyl. <laughs> so, we we then, I told them to bring me CDJs. But, bro, they were built. Marquee was the first no, one. No, yeah, by no. Far. Strauss, I, yeah. By far yeah. the first Just one. think about that transition, too. Like, I know all of us, I'm sure, come from the turntable world and, like, a part of us want to be militant, like, no, nah, I still want techniques. But then after a while, you're like, hey, it just more makes more sense to be on CDJs. I'm old. I don't want to I'm, walk. I don't even want to walk. Does Snake still use turntables? Yes. He does. He and Serato. tried too, right? But he's, yeah, uh, he finally got upgraded to a uh, uh, Serato DJ Pro. <laughs> wow. Because <laughs> he was, was on Serato for uh, Scratch Live for a long, long time. time. So he's yeah, my he, favorite EDM DJ, too, still yeah. to this day. Snake. Yo, I didn't even, like, I'm so old and lazy now. That I don't even like like walking up with like a tote bag, and you know we, we get made fun of. Like, oh, oh my so God. he's full on USBs now. Oh yeah, well, yeah you're still like ninety percent. I say 80. eighty. Like it 80%. depends on the if I Are I know you, which gig I'm going into. What's your thought on so. the USBs? Eventually, I just want to have some shit formatted, but ready, I'll, ready. Yeah, to go, I just yeah. still like the. I, I think I like, like the sampler. I like just the yeah. for hip hop. I don't know. I just think you got to be. Yo, more honestly, I've converted a few like. Because a few people have seen me play in Vegas. I'm like, not against it. I'm not against it. Yeah. Like, I'm not going to be hard. Once you know your way around the 3000s and you realize how easy it is. Like, even Deluxe showed me, like, a trick where I was like, oh, my God. And this is no, I showed that same way. trick to someone that's been on USBs for, like, years, years. And I was just like, you know, the prepare. Like, I was like, the man, prepare I box, prepare. right? I, I use my prepare box. I'm uh -huh. always thinking, like, five records ahead. Right, right. Quick mix, whatever. And all it took was watching one YouTube video. And then, like, I learned how to do that on the yeah. CDJ. And, like, even the guy, he was like, oh, I just wish there was a prepare box. I was like, huh, 
<laughs> you say that? Let me show you something. There is. And then I told the other guy, our guy, our friend David Clutch from Vegas. Yeah. Um, he's been on forever, bro. And and I told him about it. He was like, Whoa. He goes, I never knew that. And I bet you he goes, I bet I'm playing with Diplo and I bet you he doesn't even know that. So I was like, Yeah, I guarantee he doesn't. Yeah, no, I'm getting more open to the thought of it and just DJing with Tyler yeah. the more he's been on this shit. So I'm more open to it, but yeah. I still like I said for me, I still like the the laptop aspect searching nah but I, I think once you get more organized and like you That's can my search thing. on, I'm not, can oh, search I'm not on the 2000s yeah i'm not Bro, as organized this this is a thing about you have to be so organized because i went i had to go to my main crate which is a disaster you just drop everything just in everything. there yeah but on serato it's easy right i went to my main crate for on the usb uh this past weekend at uh in vegas it starts off at like wherever my lowest BPM was. Probably 60. 58. Like, <laughs> yeah. yeah. knows what it was. The box. Uh, yeah, something. <laughs> Bro, I had to go to 90. And I just sc- scrolled like a thousand times. Like, bah, 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 bah. it was so annoying. I was like, all right, I got to clean this up. Yeah. You have to be so organized. But once you do that, man, you know, here's a problem, right? I just don't like having a bag on me. And after the club, I want to go to Rhino. <laughs> I don't want to go to the he Rhino. Got, he with got a bag. on USB strictly because he wants to go to Rhino. The boy right here. The rhino. I, I don't want to bring it's a bag to Rhino because they're gonna make make me check it. I'm paranoid, so I'm like I pull up with a headphones and USBs. And I'm, I'm, I'm definitely good. left my bag at Rhino before. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah you did. <laughs> yeah, I remember. Yeah, and I had yeah. to go get it the next yeah. morning, and luckily they're 24 hours. <laughs> <laughs> That's the worst feeling like, when you leave your bag somewhere and like, bro. You luckily you get it back, but just those that hour that you don't know you can get it back, you're like. Oh I left my God. car in Mikey Ball. I mean, my bag in Mikey Ball's car, which is our friend from Vegas. He's actually from here. It's Echo's brother. Yeah. But uh, I left my my bag. And, you know, he blacks out. <laughs> so I hit him the next day. Oh, my God, dude. Is my bag. Do, have you seen my bag? He was like, I don't know. He goes and checks his car. And it was there. Thank God. Yeah. But that was a close call. I think for pools though, USB. Oh, pools the is way. thousand percent. I think that's the. I've way. been wanting to do it for years, strictly for pools, and then now, finally, we're on it. And I did my a pool party, and like, even sour milk was like, he's like, damn, you're on this shit too. I was like, bro, and it's funny because these episodes don't age well. It's like if you go back and listen to our when we first got on Twitch, you were like, no. oh my god, there's a thing called raid, <laughs> and there's subs and it's just like they don't age well like in a few months you're gonna be on usbs everyone's gonna be on usbs and or not maybe a year from now i don't know i think serato taught me that lesson was like you don't want to be so hard-headed to like oh man i'm gonna stick on vinyl yeah. like no, you said it right like i'm open to it like but you know it's yeah, crazy the day, like just be open and like so we do like two by four sets too when we get booked for fade and we each have a laptop oh it's and the best and the, the and best. the one time I was like, I'm like, you know, fuck it, I'm gonna do USB tonight because the DJ booth at EBC was so small. I would give you know Eric and myself some little little wiggle room, whatever. And it was the first time, first night I really used it. I you know it was like, <laughs> it was whack because I wasn't like prepared. Right. And then after that night, I just, you know, I went back and started reorganizing everything. I was still I was still back on the laptop until I was fully ready. And within like a month and maybe like five, four or five days a week of just like organizing every morning. I will wake up, coffee, organize before but I then, go work out. But then recently we did a show and yeah. we did a gig in Sacramento and we both use USBs. By far, like if you're going back to back, that's the, that's the move. Man, the what, house, what about the like house a disaster guys, right? story though? Any horror stories though? Um, yeah, what? it like it froze. I don't like... One of the CDJs froze, but you know, it just restarted. I mean, I've lost three USBs already, so whoever <laughs> found them just got the best set ever. Yeah. <laughs> they can just be a DJ, like literally plug and play. But you know, they're not gonna be able. Be able I'm gonna hang around with you when you get blocked out. Like, oh, he lost. <laughs> I lo- when we did uh, Sunday like brunch, this. I was jumping up and down at, in San Diego. I want to go look for my uh, my my fucking USB. There was. It was gone, and I had to like, you know. But can it. you just copy them now? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You could just like but duplicate I, them. Yeah, I said something to the crowd. I was like, "Yo, I'll give you hundred bucks. You find a USB, and someone found it, and they didn't <laughs> want the they didn't want the money." So I was like, All right. "God bless them." What uh, what what inspires you? What's what's uh like, just 
doing radio. You you've toured with artists, multiple artists. You I'm, I'm inspired by like DJs who like. What's still something doing you want to get to that you haven't done yet? Like like is like like DJing like big room Vegas. Is that like a thing you're into or not really? Um, I've been able to do it like to, to somewhat done, like some spots like, like Dre's, Dre's like yeah, yeah. stuff like that, and like that's cool. Like I want to be more solidified in that. I think for me, I I kind of want to transition more into like eventually like the manager side or like A and R side. Oh wow! Whatever. Like as like far as like with like yeah. with even like the artists I work with, like just get more involved with that because I'll be doing a lot of bookings for them too. Like booking shows, oh, yeah. Even like little things, like uh, behind the scenes, like just like opinion, A and R type of shit. So it's like to me, I want to like also transition into that more because it's something I always wanted to do. So I just think it's like a natural progression. Like the DJ shit is cool. I feel like I've done a lot of things I want to do: radio, tours, TV, clubs. Like that's dope. But I just think like. In my life, like where I'm at, that's where my heart seems to be at more, like booking the shows, business the business side. Just something where like I could just, when I'm ready to walk away from DJing, I'll have something Because it's something else. you could do forever. Yeah, you, you know what I'm saying? And I, it still pertains to what I'm doing. like the old guy in the club. Yeah. yeah, and it's still like related into like what I'm doing. Like yeah, it's not it's like I'm going to go sell fucking tummy tea <laughs> or like, you know what I'm saying, do some bullshit. Being, being, being that we're all like the same age, do you... Do you think you're like old, like old, too old to do this? Or do you nah, like I don't. I don't because I, I look at like the cats above me, like even like the melodies and like other DJs that are maybe a little bit older than me that like are still doing even like a friends in. Still well, Mello check Mello retired from clubs a while ago. He yeah. did, but like he even like, like where this. he he got to a point where like he was still doing some of the things and like just show me like you could still be a certain age still do cool shit. Franny's a little bit older than me. He's still doing dope shit to doing big clubs at a high level like a lot of it is right here if you act old yeah people are gonna see you yeah. old you know what i'm saying like i don't have that mentality like people always ask me like yo how old are you and like when i tell them they never believe us like bro like since i'm, I'm I a lot my of people, age a lot of people are afraid to say their age age and it's just like yo like we're not old and not only that like everyone that's gonna shame you for your age they're gonna be your age and if they're not they're un unfortunate you know yeah. like but like you're gonna be this age one day hopefully and think about this if you start a company from scratch right now and you build it you could turn you'll be like 70 and your company you started today is 30 years old and success like you know what i mean like it's a long time to to go we got a long way to go not so fact and like even when i was younger like I always like dream and pray to be doing this, but like you never know like how old you're gonna still be able to do it at this age. And like to me, it's like a blessing. Like damn, to be at this age, still be at this level. Like I think it was like damn, I'm thankful. For I thank sure. God every day. Like it could be worse. Like my my dad, my dad told me that one time. I was just like pre pandemic. I was like man, sick of this shit. Like burnt, 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 burnt out. Didn't want to do it no more. And then like my dad would like he checks the schedule so he would know like oh you got you're gonna be in miami and here and there and there this week and i'm like i'm like replying like bummed out he goes you're lucky and i was like what you're like you're lucky they still want you he goes you're old and like they still want you <laughs> and it's the top clubs he he does research he doesn't know much doesn't yeah. even know english but he knows enough to that like the top tier venues still want me yeah. at this age. And he's just like, yeah, he's right. and he made me think, see it a different way. Like, damn, you're so right. Like, this is crazy. Even my dad, he gave me a speech like during like- e rock said, we're not old, we're just better. That's a fact. No, that's real. And like my dad gave me a speech at one time when like I was on the fence of like still keeping a regular job and like quitting to do the DJ shit. Well, yeah, give me that, give me that, um, that, that, moment when when you stopped doing the the loans like what was there's the, two what, moments like what did you have to make enough money djing where you're like okay i think i'm good or did you just take the no nah, i had risk? two i had two moments so one one time i was djing this party and this dude i never met he was just like telling me some shit i don't even know why this guy had came out of this conversation 
Jesus just, sent them. <laughs> yo, he could. Yo, everything happens for a reason. But this dude just came out of nowhere. He was just talking about DJing. Like, yo, man, like, like you should just do it, man. He's like, you know, he's like, it's better to know what it was than to like never know. Basically, like, just give me a speech, like, bro, like, you could live knowing that you failed, but it's like you're gonna hate yourself if you never tried. One hundred percent. So like that was one conversation. Then one time my dad saw like I was going back and forth. Like I was trying to please my mom, have a job. You know, it's like I come from like Mexican family. Like mm -hmm. my mom knows have a job, security, family, car, like what she knows. So I was trying to do that and like I was miserable. But at the same time I was traveling with T weapons on the weekend. Yeah. So I was trying to balance both. And my dad was just like, hey, whatever you're gonna do, just do it. He's like, you always start shit but you don't finish it. He's like, whatever it is you decide to do, just finish it. Whether you're gonna yeah. do the home loan shit or the DJ thing, pick one and do it. And like that conversation made me be like, all right, I'm gonna go quit my job. Had good credit at the time. I didn't have no money saved up, but I had good credit, had a car. Credit credit card is, uh, what, what, what? I had credit cards the, and everything though, like good credit. What's the Shaq, the Shaquille, what's the Shaq theory? Which one, I don't know. It's basically like Shaq's theory, like he was big on credit cards. He goes, and you know how people talk about interest rate. He goes, I don't yeah. give a fuck about an interest rate. He goes, all I know is I have a $10,000 limit and my minimum payment is $100. So I spend all my money. I spend all, I buy whatever I want on this card. And as long as I pay $100 a month, I don't give a fuck what the interest rate is. <laughs> and I was just like, yeah, interesting way to see it. That's so like a lot, a lot of Americans, man. Yeah, exactly. Most of Americans. A lot. No, so I quit. I quit my job. Had good credit. Had like two credit cards. Fucked off my credit cards because I didn't work for years. Like I just wanted to be. How did you get DJ. good credit? Just at the time, I was that was my job. My job was to help people get into a house but have good credit. But how did you get good credit? Because I had a you good just, job. I had I paid my shit. I, I already knew everything. I knew all the finesse, like how to have good credit. That was like my job to teach people how to have good credit. So. Yeah. I fucked up my credit, spent all my money I had saved. The year was about to run out. And like in that year, I was going with like Snoop. Who else was it? Snoop, Akon, Suge Knight. That was like my day would consist of us driving from Palmdale, go either hang out with either one of those three. Oh, shit. Wait, you were hanging out with them? Yeah, like we would be around because my manager was like Snoop's like little homie. So Your like, manager at the loan? My, no, my manager um, who was like, who was the, my boy that put me on. like DJing manager. Yeah, kind of like, he wasn't even my DJ. He was just like one of my friend's friends who just was tapped in. He was Ray J's friend and uh, Snoop Dogg's friend. So we would either all put in on gas and weed. We'd drive from Palmdale. In the morning, we're hanging out with Suge Knight. Then after that, we're going with Snoop Dogg. And after that, we're going with A console. Like, that was my day consistent. That's such a... Yeah, yeah. So it's like just hanging Shug around, like just Akon. Yeah, just to hang <laughs> around. Random. Like we would just try to be in the scene, yeah, like yeah. yo, whatever we could do. So like that's how it started, and then in that year I met Ray J. Like I was about to uh, go back to work because yeah. it was like my years up. I was just getting myself a year. So within that year, then Ray J was like, "Yo, I might need you to come DJ." So one day he calls me. I'm later with this girl. I don't answer. Hey, the, Dre, I don't answer what's the, up, Dre? Yo, he calls me. I don't answer the phone. <laughs> Check this out. I missed the the call, so I call him back the next day. Like, yo, you called? They're like, yeah, we called you, but we already filled the position. They went to go do like the first two tour dates with the sexy can I run. So I'm like, damn, I missed the call. Like the call I've been waiting for yeah. for a year. I missed it. Damn. So this dude Rampage at the time he was DJing for Omarion. I remember Rampage. Yeah, you DJ for Omarion and, and Ray Earl. J. So. Ray J and Omari had beef at the time. So Rampage was DJing for both. Good dude. So Rampage goes to go do this shit with Omari because Omari was bigger at the time. Yeah. So they call me and like, yo, we need you for like a day. They fly me in. I come in the first day. I already have an after party lined up. Like, yo, I got a party for you. I got money. They're like, yo, tell Rampage. Like, we don't need them. Don't come back. Damn. And after that, that shit was a five-year run just from that. Nice. Wow. Like, I didn't want to go home. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm like, I'm going to come in, like, bringing something to the table. And like I said, I came in, had a party lined up already off the rip. 
And like he was just like, yo, bring something to the yeah, table. Yeah. This is very like, important. Yeah, bring add something value. To the like not yeah, just Yeah, like anybody could DJ. Like I've always said this, like same thing with Ty. Like he could replace me any day, but I bring more than DJing to the table, yeah. whether it's advice off, like off the stage, ringing shows, doing radio shit for him. Like little things that like just beside DJing, like yeah. that's the easy part, doing the shows. But it's like what else do I bring to the team besides that? It's adding more value to yeah, it. Yeah, more value yeah. to it to where it's going to make it harder for somebody to fire me because it's like, yo, he rings more than just coming to DJ the show. Yeah. We could probably find a better tour DJ, but there's other little elements that's like when they for all sure. come together, it just makes it harder uh, to replace or whatnot. So I think that's what I bring to the table as far as like that. I just never want to just do one thing. It's like I want to come in and just do more than that, like, what else could I do to help? Because if I'm helping you, I'm helping all of us. Hell yeah. Damn, that's amazing. So shit, that moment that secured the like, I right, I'm out I'm out this job. I'm out I'm out this shit. You know what I'm saying? Like I was just like I remember too having a feeling like, yo, either I'm gonna die or something good's gonna happen to me. I remember having like this aura What the like, like you a, like a paranoid like feeling? a feeling like like I, I would tell like people like yo I'm either gonna die what the or fuck? something really good's about to happen to me because yeah. I could I could feel it's something like I don't feeling. know what it was bro yeah. I could like I could sense something yeah. I'm like I would tell people like bro I don't know what it is I never felt this feeling but I know something is like gonna happen I don't know good or bad something is about to happen and it happened well Damn. thank God for that Dope. yo for yeah, real thank man. God my Yui I mean just think about it. I came from T weapons. Lean like a cholo, like I had like a little like a up and down, like yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Into the Ray J shit, going on like jets and five star hotels to like coming back down to like just the clubs, then working with Ty to like and back up. No, it was worse. It was like going back oh, down yeah, because it's, it's he was starting brand bottom, new. Yeah, yeah. So it was like, bro, sharing a room with another dude and flying coach, you know what yeah. I'm saying? So like I went like boom 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 and then went back down so it's like still fly coach bro what you talking about no when nah, i'm talking about like no I, I i tell you this day i fly like coach i'm not i won't i won't pay for first class but yeah. like if you get that upgrade if nice. i get the upgrade cool but like only if the I'm first just, class is like 200 bucks more yeah, literally yeah, bro I, within reason you're like oh, yeah right, cool. even then to i'm gonna go to sleep so it doesn't even matter i'll save the 200 and go spend it on myself when i land but <laughs> it's just like it was a roller coaster like i went from five star hotels to the hojo in yeah. you know what i'm saying so it's like <laughs> no i'm not even lying yeah, bro. Yeah, like this sure. is real like even going to south by southwest having to do six shows a day oh, like man. just like i went back i went down but it's like you know what this is what i signed up for this why i, was, I want i wanted to see that i wanted to experience it i knew it was going to be a battle with ty like cause like the rage shit was already made and set the ty shit was like like proving something to myself like all right could we really go from the bottom to the top and it worked out yeah. like i'm still on the ride with him and i tell him to this day like That's so dope man, he got a long way to go bro no like, and i tell him i said yo there's still a lot of things yeah. we haven't done but we checked off a lot of things and like we still got more to go so let's just continue yeah. to work and i told him that's why i haven't quit it's like there's so many things if i quit now it'd be harder for me to quit now because i feel like i quit too early yeah. right if that makes sense it's like damn I and i think you have the right mentality now where like you already have the the mentality of bringing shit to the table but then you're also thinking business-wise so maybe one day you you bring an artist and you guys co-manage them or or he produces them and you manage them like it's something bigger yeah. is going to happen from that and that, I mean? that's one thing i like about him too like i always tell him like I don't got to worry about his work ethic. Like other artists, we try to assign other artists. Is he before. still tied is, Sorry, not to cut you off. Is he still a Taylor gang? Yeah, he's still Taylor he's gang. Still, okay, go ahead. So it's like, you can't teach that. Like I met people that are incredibly talented, maybe more talented, but they don't have that thing of like, do you show up to the studio every day? Can you show up to a radio promo on tour every day? Do you have the heart to do it? You know what I mean? Everybody doesn't have that. Like, yeah. it's like being a good DJ. I know a lot of DJs that are way better than maybe all three of us put together, oh, yeah, but, for sure. but they don't have that. It's like the ego gets in the way or yeah. it's like, there's just attitude and like, yeah, there's like things where like, they know they're more talented talent and like, they don't appreciate certain things. So it's like, bro, like we might have to work harder. 
where we actually will do that and we'll put our ego aside where the guy who's more talented is not willing to do that yeah and that shit gets in their way and it prevents them from being great yeah. so like I, we met a lot of those people were like yeah you might be more talented but you're not willing to put your ego aside to actually let it make it happen if that makes sense yeah yeah it's always it always works out like that too man like people with talent just ruin, like just think about how many dj shit with think just, about how many djs you know from when you started right there might be a handful that was doper than you but they just didn't have that that heart to keep it going or the ego to put it aside like all right i'll do this even though you know maybe it doesn't satisfy me like spiritually or i gotta put my ego aside like there's people that i know that are dope and what are they doing now yeah that's you know true, what I'm saying? Man. Like I, I thugged it out. Like I remember going to high school with my records in my bag. People would laugh at me. I'd be like, "All right, we'll I'm see." Really, you know what I'm saying? Like I'm really about this shit. Yeah, you know I'm what I'm sure. saying? Like I really live this shit. Now what are you doing? And like it's not to throw in their face, but yeah, the same people that laughed yeah. at you, like, "Oh, you don't fuck with me now." I just you saw Hollywood. It's like, bro. I just saw a quote. Fuck. I just saw a quote the other day on I Instagram. Got, I got a quote from a wise man. The quote it was a quote on instagram and someone said it and i'm gonna butcher it but i'm not <laughs> quoting them because i don't even know who the fuck said it but they said if you if you tell someone your dreams and they don't laugh you're not dream dreaming big enough <laughs> that was pretty yeah, good that'd be like a ridiculous dream no, yeah. it's just like right. no like his dream was like yo i'm gonna make this shit in a yeah. dj and like that's a big enough dream to make these people laugh at you no, they laughed at me because you got to think I'm coming from Palm at the time. So it's like people laughed at me, all kinds of shit. They didn't believe in me. It's like, all right, cool. I believed in myself and I'm still here. And like the biggest ha-ha is still being here and being able to live off this shit, yep. having a house that got paid for from DJing, driving a car. That Did you ever think you'd buy a house off of DJing? I thought, I always thought about it, but it's like, you think about it, but you know it's if it's possible, you know what I'm saying? But like now it's like sometimes I really like wake up and just thank God, like, damn, bro, we're blessed to like play music. Like sometimes I'll go to the gig and I'm thinking like, damn, God is good. Like my job is to really play music for people. Mm -hmm. And like I, I thank God all the time for that shit. Like, damn, man, like if I told myself if like the younger me seen this now, he'd be so gassed. You know, they always say that, like, what, what would sure, the younger yeah. blah, blah, blah yeah. say? Bro, he would be gassed for, like, he would be gassed because, like, he'd be like, damn, we did it. We made it. Like, if I had to go back to working a regular job, I could say to myself, like, I did it. I would be satisfied, like, yo, yeah. I was at this tier, and, like, shit, they can never take that shit away. And let me ask you this. On the flip side, do you, have, do you ever have a moment where you're just, like, sick of it? Like, man, it's yeah, I, need I get, to find I get something else to do because it's DJ and shit. It's like I, I'm just like, like you know, you've it's repetitive. No, we're sure. spots over and over. The the li life on the road, as you know, not easy. No, very absolutely. hard. It's not that glamorous. Here's another. Here's another boarding, fucking pass, and here's another line. I gotta wait in another full flight. Like yeah, there's, you, just a, there's that side of it. Do you ever have those moments? Because I'm assuming you're human. I do, because like even just coming back from China and having having to deal with this shit and being stressed out in China, like I'm at the point now where I want to work smarter and not work harder. So yeah. like if I could go work and do three gigs a week, whether it's like Vegas, Miami, or whatever and that makes just as much or the same as if i work six days a week that's what i'm trying to figure out where i could go work less but work smarter mm -hmm. work better gigs yeah. I'm better working, venues i'm working harder not smarter right now no nah, but see <laughs> I, and I, I love what you did like just like the whole thing like i remember when you was telling about the merch shit like i was happy for you i'm like bro like that's what makes you happy like that's yeah. how you get it I out think, creatively you know what I i'm saying that's, for me it was like yeah i hope one day it gets to that point but like recurrently like i make way less doing the merch stuff but i'm happier sometimes it's than some of my thing. some of my gigs that i have to travel to god knows where to do god knows what and that will pay me more i think when, i think when you're at a level that we're at money doesn't motivate us exactly. it's, about, it's about like i am not motivated by money it's, it's about being happy and sometimes it's like if you could be happy and do what you love 
that's what it counts. Yeah. It doesn't matter about X, Y, Z. If you could just live to wake up and do what you love, that shit's priceless. Yeah, don't get me wrong. Money's important to live. Like, as long I'm to the point where, like, I just want to get by and I'm happy. Like, I don't, I don't, I have no, like, ambition. Like, being rich is not a goal of mine. Like, it's not like, damn, I need to be, become a fucking this like to me it's just being about rich enough to live that lifestyle that you want to do if you want to wake up i'm already way richer than i thought i'd ever be no same things rich people say (laughs) not even that no No, i i i I, I thought of when i'm talking (laughs) i'm like oh of course (laughs) people that say money doesn't matter are people that have money it's like yeah of course but but there's also like a really mindset about it too like it's it, you really you could be rich and be miserable yeah, I no. promise you that like oh, I know dude, trust I know no, no exactly we, like we've been around I saw yeah. like I tell you it's like for me my goal is to be able to go to sleep when I want wake up when I want and DJ yeah whether I'm just making it or if I'm making XYZ above what I think cool but as long as I could just be happy and wake up and do that that's all that matters yeah. bro like I don't have to be rich. As long as I could wake up and do these things, you and I just get by. I'm happy. Like I don't have to like be super rich, bro. But if I could go to sleep when I want, not have to have an alarm to wake up, bro. That's bro. I kid you not. Funny. That's one of my biggest luxuries right now. I was telling someone about this, and I was like, "You want to know when I wake up? When I wake up? Yeah. I work so hard in my life to be able to wake yeah. up." on my own that's like, what i tell you to set an alarm and like that that to me is one of my biggest like i'm that's I'm, a that's like a flex like that's bro, a luxury. no that's that's a luxury that's, that's a, a luxury. that's a luxury bro like same thing with you i'm sure it's like same thing you're early morning person right i see you wake up early drink your coffee like that's a luxury bro yeah, like I love it. to wake up and do that every day wake and, up when you want bro that's what to me motivates me to work how i work and honestly like dj is still fun to me like i love it exactly more than ever which is wild and like, that's because you're years. like well i don't want to say this on the mic yeah you can say it <laughs> that's because you're getting girls now <laughs> 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 you, that's because you're getting girls now and like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Look at you, Bro, i dying. think it makes them more fun right <laughs> yo but even big five no, was but still- it, am i right <laughs> yeah yeah like no it's true like he's living a, a fun life right now that maybe didn't have 10 years or five 10 years ago you know it's crazy too because we it's crazy too because we get iraq gave a 10 piece for that (laughs) (laughs) that's funny (laughs) it's crazy though too bro because like i said it's like we have we really enjoy this shit man at the end of the day that's what it comes down to like i'm pretty sure all of us today we really don't enjoy it's when the day we stop and look into something else but right now i enjoy it still you know what i mean like I still have the kid in me just yeah, talking about same. equipment no, like dude i was on the same boat as eric like pre like pandemic like i was over it too i was jaded you know fucking gaming getting my weight back and then you know that that shit was a blessing in a way the so, pandemic, pandemic kind of helped us in a sense where like we was able to get back to playing what we wanted that, that made me realize like damn i fucking love djing like i thought i was so fucking burnt where i was like damn i hate this shit now and it wasn't, and I thought it was DJing because you just put it all into that. Right. Bro, we were DJing more than ever during oh, COVID. Oh, yeah. No, and we I were, but the good thing was we was able to play what we actually yeah, like. Exactly. Like, we didn't have to worry about. Because it, it wasn't a job. Hey, you didn't have to worry about the guy, pick it up, brother. You, to, you know hey, what I'm hey, saying? Pick, pick you didn't have to worry about the man just say, pick it up. It's like, bro, more more I'm going to play Morrissey. I'm going to play MGMT, Smoking The Doors. Booze. Wow. We're live on Twitch now. They're going crazy. Let's go. Hype oh, train. Do we got a hype train? Yo, we got to get one more person to kick that hype train off, man. <laughs> Yo, for good old times. Yeah. Shit, our, our regular Sade, popular listeners you know are probably saying? like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, I would look I would look so forward to playing Sade Sundays, man. Oh, my like, God. You were crushing. Like, I used to bro, love yeah, like, your Sade Sundays, but yeah. I used to love when you got you friends in and Green Lancer. Sample, sample Sundays, bro. Yeah. Like, all that stuff. Yeah, like, crushing dope. that. Like, just even, like, his shit, too. Like, the I would wake over. up. Yeah, I would wake up in the morning listen you know what i'm saying was, and just yeah, enjoy that was inspired it. by espinoza damn yeah, i never that knew that shit, yep. i never really? knew that because uh it was ig live and he was fucking streaming while he was doing dishes and like vacuuming or some shit and i was like dude i'm gonna do like wake up and just trip out and make coffee he's like you should do it so that's why i started the early morning shit no one was doing that 
but Man. yeah Jay. and then you inspired the bend over you know what i'm saying which bend is the crazy it's like one thing inspired yeah. one thing and the oh, other yeah. thing inspired the other thing like the pour like, over to the bend over the pandemic really like re- to the was pandemic, like a reset man. like a good reset no it was button, a great bro. reset dude like, like it, ma- ever, it made me fall in love with that. so much we all music. needed that shit yeah do you ever like want to go back to that yeah absolutely yeah, me too I, I we, we, we joked around about it and we like we started going back like what 21 22 we're like damn like we should like have a shutdown at least like once a year like yeah just let me reset. get six months yo bro <laughs> six months. let me get six months it's like Maybe we were four. all grounded together Need like a month a like, month uh, of siesta man <laughs> I, I, I think the dope thing too is like for for la like we all came together in a sense where like we all really genuinely supported each other yeah. like in a sense where it's like if your stream is on, shit, I'm jumping in there. Yeah. If I was on, I'm jumping in. Like, Angie, Bella, like, we all was genuinely, like, tapping in to see each other. And, like, we would have conversations like, yo, what do you think about this? So, like, we all became streamers, some graphic designers. Like, we yeah. all came versed in so, so many things that, like, we didn't even know about like we started buying equipment when we didn't even know yeah. what was gonna happen like, <laughs> like is this a good investment new. like am i gonna get a check like like we didn't start the stream with the money but it's like the the average person isn't gonna be like well let me just buy a bunch of equipment we don't know what's about to happen yeah some of you will be like no nah, i'm about to save money like no, where else is like yeah, nah yeah, yeah. this buy more cameras yeah more yeah. ob like this buy more equipment like we didn't you, know what we was gonna yeah, get would, out of it bro i bought like a new macbook like souped up MacBook Pro, which oh, you to know stream aren't with. cheap to exactly. stream with. And then it like didn't work. two days later, they're like, oh, you need to stream with a PC. I'm Yo. like, oh my, here we go. So they got to build the but PC. But now you can, yeah, fuck. Like, I remember hey, that. Like, Anil blessed me, but like, it, it was just like learning like, yo, something new every day. And it made it exciting and made it fun again. And it did bring the DJ community together, bro. Like I became way closer to a lot of people that, and I met people that I didn't know before arcade even oh, like yeah. us right like even us like we all have our, our own schedules our own thing like you'll be busy doing miami vegas but it was actually to like okay i can come pull up here yeah and actually come hang out now we all could actually hang out and yeah. support each other and just like catch a vibe like it was like we actually at the time there was no excuse so it was like all right y'all here at the hmc shit let me pull up can i come pull up come pull up yep. and it was amazing like it's some of the best times like i think you were the first person to pull up on us outside of our circle Cause, yeah because there was still that fear of like the covid shit yeah, oh, these oh, motherfuckers wouldn't even let me like if i go to vegas and come back i have to like chill for like a day or two <laughs> no because it was there yeah, was, no, yeah, there was there that was. one point where it was like scary like yeah. oh shit people really are dying and like this is really you don't know how it's gonna affect you so like it was that scary shit. So I remember like, oh shit, Dre's coming. Where the fuck's Dre's? Where's Dre been, bro? Like, shit, I, I was know. just at the crib chilling, just like everybody else, man. Enjoying. Yeah, it. that was a fun. No, that was though, amazing. I yeah, that. we need somebody to drop another ten piece, man. Come on. <laughs> oh my god. Another ten dude. piece, Come bro. On, we at level four. Come on. What up, Ren Rock? Do it for the good old times. But we need to hit a level ten hype train, man. Oh, Come man. on. Where? How long are we at right now? Uh, Probably at three. Scratchy? Two hours thirty minutes. Oh, oh shit. Almost Okay, we got to wrap it up. Right, yeah, yeah. Um, man, I think we covered a good part of your journey, no, bro. No, man, I um, appreciate y'all. You know, especially chopping up with y'all. Two dudes I respect. Look up to, you know man. what I'm saying? And yeah, just of course. Thank you, bro. Always just have a good time. Just even when we just chopping it up, it's amazing. Honor to be here. I can't believe you haven't been on the podcast. No, for real, before. man. It's all good. Yeah. It's all good, man. You know, maybe not the last, but maybe next man, time. It won't be know. the last. And uh, I'm excited we are able to to test the first live on Twitch with you. It was only right. We were all became very close uh, during our stream days. So yeah, so it's a good reunion. Thank you guys for, yeah. for hanging out with us on Twitch and for you guys listening on YouTube or, or watching on YouTube or listening on, on the apps. Uh, thank you guys for tuning in. Make sure you share it. Yes, tag please. Tag us tag H- headliner music club on instagram thank you guys for always sharing it spreading the word oh we on level five uh, now even though, on, even though you guys were here we today even until we until we finish this high train even man. though you guys were here today go like the uh you know the go listen to the podcast too <laughs> yeah, go listen to the podcast <laughs> give us uh you know i uh, will stay on twitch but let's sign off on the pod thank you guys thank you dre no thank y'all thank again, you guys bro.